Access Sacramento presents Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week, and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda. have reached week eight of the regular season and contending teams are coming around the far turn and going to the whip and access sacramento's hometown sports game of the week comes to you tonight from antelope high school where the host titans are squaring off with league leading intercom good evening and welcome to titan stadium here on the campus of Antelope High School with the Imperator of Analysis, Hall of Famer Jim Domino. I'm Will James, we welcome you aboard. Tonight, Coach, a pivotal game in the CBC. Well, it certainly is, Will. We got a big crowd here to witness it because this game, they gotta play like a playoff game here tonight because they're both in the running. Sure, Intercom is 7-0, but Coach Stark knows coming over here to play the Titans, he's got a big game, and Antelope knows it's got to win to stay in the running for the title. So, yes, they got to play it like a playoff game. Well, they have home field advantage and a good crowd out here to spark them on against the high-powered, high-octane Intercom Tigers. Now, the last time they met, it was about a year ago. It was over at Intercom, and in a tight ball game, the Tigers prevailed. They gave them the leg up they needed to win the conference by one game. As you see there, a 37-28 decision. Clutch in the stretch for Terry Stark's outfit. Now the last outings for these two teams were excellent momentum builders. Well, yes, they were because Antelope went against Wood Creek and got off to a great start, scoring 21 unanswered points in the first half and cruising to a 35-6 victory. Meanwhile, Intercom had to take care of River Valley, which also runs that famous wing tee that Terry Stark runs. And of course, uh, this ball game turned out 42-20, and Intercom scored uh, pretty heavily early in the game and then took it easy and coasted to an easy 42-20 victory over River Valley. Well, as we know, both of these ball clubs have star power, and it will be up to the impact players to lead their teams and carry them to what they hope will be a victory this evening. And for Terry Stark's outfit, the tenacious Tigers are on the spot on the road. Well, they certainly are. And let's start out with that quarterback. That's what makes him go. J.J. Ray, excellent season so far. 14 TDs and only two interceptions. And then Willie Hardy having a tremendous year with a 10.8 average four touchdowns, a great receiver out of the backfield, and then one of the best blockers and trap blockers, pull blockers guard, pull blocking guard, Kyle Coughlin, number 58, doing the job there. On a defensive side of the football, of course, they're led by Sean Switzer, that outside backer with two sacks. Tyus in that inside backer spot, leading the team in tackles, 65 tackles, and then Jalen Bryant having a phenomenal year with five sacks leading that defensive front. Well, a formidable defense to say the least. That'll be a focal point for Matt Ray and his offensive brain trust to crack that tough D. 
And as far as the impact players for Antelope are concerned, this is the biggest game yet for this group. Well, it certainly is. Let's start with quarterback Gallon, just having uh, uh, a good year, except uh, in the terms of picks. Uh, certainly, Coach Ray would like him to clean that up a little bit, having seven and six ratio there with touchdowns to picks. Isaiah Nash just off to a great start, 422 yards, seven yards per carry average. Abdullah, uh, certainly great blocker up front, counting on him. And on that defense, of course, Brian Frank, 58 tackles, one sack, and helping him out, Navarro, defensive back, and wide receiver, Jeff's having two picks. Marco Wilson having a great year with 50 tackles. And last but not least, of course, that great linebacker, Brian Frank, with 58 tackles leading the team in that category. And I'll tell you what, this defense is coming around. There are a lot of underclassmen, but they are rounding into form here the second half of the season. Well, Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week has the table set for you. Don't wander off too far. When we come back, Lauren Goodman will add some key insights in tonight's big game, a closer look at these highly successful coaches, and a little featurette to go with it. Stay with us. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, it. or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Selfie. <laughs> Nailed it. Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half. Nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Titan Stadium here in Antelope, California. And we have two heavy hitters who have a ton of stats and records on their resume. For the visiting Intercom Tigers, we are coming in with Terry Stark. Now he's in his 15th season and he has 155 record with 28 losses. Not too bad for Terry. Now he has compiled a ton of winning seasons. He's had 13 out of the 14 seasons, 10 plus wins, and his best season came in 2009 where he was 13 and one. Terry has 11 league titles and in the playoffs, he's 22 and 13. Not bad for the Intercom Tigers. Now, who you see on the screen right now, we have Matt Ray for the Antelope. He's coming in his 11th year, and he has an 86 and 38 record. He also has four seasons where he had 10 plus wins, and his best seasons came in 2015 and 2016, where he went at 12 and one. He also holds four league titles, and he has a playoff record of seven and eight. Coming in with a lot of confidence. Now this is a short and sweet thus far. Tonight makes only the second meeting between the two teams. But last meeting, oh, it held all of the weight. In the inaugural meeting for these two teams coming in, 
week seven of the 2018 season, it was a matchup that you had to be there to see. It was intense, it had drama, and it had suspense. In the quarter one, it was all Endercombe that came out with two big touchdowns, took the lead, but in quarter two, Antelope responded really big, taking three touchdowns and taking the lead they're going into half. Now coming into the third, it was really slow, but Endercombe was able to score eight, score a touchdown as well as get a safety, two-point conversion. In that fourth quarter though, Antelope came out with a touchdown, Endercombe responded with a touchdown, and then the Endercombe defense was the ceiling deal as they got an interception and they got a safety. This ball game is gonna be all of the hype and it's homecoming, Will. Thank you very much, Goody. Nice comprehensive rundown on a classic ball game, the first ever meeting between these two squads, played about a year ago over at Endercombe High School. Tonight, however, home field advantage belongs to host Antelope. They need this victory tonight to stay in the CVC chase, presently headed by Endercombe and tough Roseville, also in position to win the league crown if they can notch a clutch victory in week nine against Endercombe. But that's all ahead of us. Tonight, though, an outstanding event with homecoming being observed to the fullest extent here at Antelope High School. Their marching band is rocking. I imagine there's heavy tension among people vying for the king and queen honors. But out on the field is where the true drama will be this evening. And head coach Terry Stark of Endercombe and Matt Ray, head coach for Antelope High School, well know the importance of tonight's ball game. It's a playoff type atmosphere here, and you can certainly anticipate intense play on the field the entire evening. Stay with us, more to come here in the pregame of Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back to the big show, Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week tonight at Antelope for a key CBC matchup against the invading Intercom Tigers. Certainly always big keys in a game like this of such magnitude, and the Imperator has outlined some of those important points. Yeah, let's start it with playoff atmosphere, and this is definitely a playoff atmosphere. The crowd are into it, the fans are in it, it's homecoming. Big game for both teams. You know, Intercom comes in here unbeaten, but having talked to Coach Stark during the week, he knows and expects a very tough game here at Antelope. And MPT, mistakes, penalties, turnovers. Let's hope they don't be the difference in the game, but very often those mistakes, penalties, and turnovers are, if they result in points or first downs or moving the chains, they make a difference, believe me. And the winning up front, both coaches are strongly, uh, a strong point is that, hey, they think Tackle a tackle, they gotta win the battle up front and we're gonna find out real quick. Well, matchups, it seems like the key matchups never end in games like this. Well, when you've got big play Tigers who can go the route and go to the house like a Sparrow and Hardy, etc., it's gonna be really testing that Titan defense, I'll tell you, really young Miller Gay or Mitch Panola are going to have their hands full stopping the Tigers who block extremely well. And big thing is fake, faking. So big play Tigers versus the Titan defense. The next thing you got to be careful of and watching with is the coaching experience. Both coaches are experienced in playoff competition, having coached for many years. This is probably an even matchup. Stark having maybe a slight edge with 200 victories 
And then last but not least, the speed deception. You got the speed and the deception combination to intercom with four or five backs, outstanding speed, and many of them averaging nine, 10 yards per carry versus traditional power by antelope. Coach Ray preaches that. And halfback Brian Wright, Frank, and Isaiah Nash run with power. And that up front really opens up the hole. So watch for power football in Lope. And I'd say the uh, best defense for them is clock management on offense moving the chains. Well, to give you a better idea of how the Capital Valley Conference is shaking out, let's give you a look at the standings as we see here. Ender come in that top spot, Jim. Well, look at Ender come 3-0 and and Roseville 3-0. and Yes, they are. But 3-1 and Antelope is far from out of it. Yuba City 2-1. and Wood Creek, River Valley, Bella Vista bringing up the last three spots. But as you look at the top four, the top four, no one has more than one league loss. So this is huge. They're coming down the stretch the last two to three football games, and they've got to play them like playoff games. Will the top three or four all get into the playoffs? That is a possibility. I'd say the top three. Stay with us. We're going to come right back for tonight's big action, Antelope hosting Endercombe. Stay with us. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Happy to have you with us this evening here. Titan Stadium at Antelope High School, the site for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. A CVC matchup that involves the top tier in the Capital Valley Conference. Tonight, Indercom rolls in to take on Antelope and an excellent crowd has turned out on homecoming night to see the festivities and the action on the field.
Vicki Coach Kina. Antelope High School, class of 2017, with an outstanding rendition of our Star Spangled Banner. Nice to have you with us tonight. Beautiful weather conditions here. Just a whisper of a breeze is all there is. Otherwise, calm, clear, cozy, and inviting. So we invite you to stay with us for the duration in this key Capital Valley Conference matchup that will have major bearing on how things finish out this being week eight of the 10 week regular season and playoff aspirations for these squads abounding well they certainly are will a lot of a lot at uh, stake here tonight and both coaches know that and yes intercom comes in as a favorite being seven and oh but you know what they're kind of their visitors here tonight and i'll tell you i think the titans are ready to play uh, a great football game in front of their great homecoming crowd no doubt a big moment for this young ball club under head coach Matt Ray, perhaps one of his very youngest teams from top to bottom on that Titans roster. And that includes junior QB Quincy Gallon suiting up for his most important varsity game thus far. Antelope will do the booting. They won the toss and deferred. Twin receivers stationed near the Intercom five yard line and speed to burn, you might say, led by Aaron Espero. A bounding kickoff taken at about the 25 yard line. Good downfield coverage and dropped at the 28, and that is where Intercom will open shop. We'll set that Tigers offense for you, and it is potent. They're averaging 52 plus a game, and they have super speed in Terry Stark's vaunted wing T offense. They're undefeated at 7-0, and their defense is stingy too, averaging just over 10 a game. So Antelope, the Titans have their hands full. First play from scrimmage. Turn and give off the right side. Two broken tackles and a tough run for about nine, maybe all of it, close to a first down. Let's take a look at that starting group. J.J. Ray at the QB position, Hardy, Aspero, Watson, and Lewis. The backs and wings, and the tight end is John Lane. And there's that O-line, experienced and tough. First down after the 10 yard run. Ray to throw, got a man open. And there's a grab outside the 20 and it dropped at the 10 on the play. Wide open that time, Espero beat the coverage. Correction, now I can read it properly. That's John Lane. Let's take a look at that rose or that antelope defense here that just got stung for a big one. There's the down, unless the Intercom D, we'll get to that later when they switch over. So we can drop that and here we go. On first down, there he is, a Sparrow leaps to the goal line, touch down Tigers. From 12 yards out it looks like. That didn't take long. The bomb to John Lane set it up. Three plays in one minute and two seconds, Will. Three plays in 102. On for the PAT. Snap is okay, but the chip shot right down the slot. Seven nothing. The quick striking Tigers waste no time, and here's how they got in the end zone. What the handoff to Sparrow, really huge hole, dives over from about the two. And we'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge, I know, it's huge. And the salary. Oh my good, yes. I right? mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, the, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? 
Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Did you? Um, what did Endercombe set for the kickoff following in their quick TD to put them on top. They're up 7-0 and a pretty good kickoff that's driving the returner back inside the five-yard line where he's going to have to come out against some, a stacked deck, but he does a beautiful job on that return. Gorey picked his way nicely, and they'll set up shop with above-average field position. From the... Titan 27. Well, here's Matt Ray's multi set offense. Gallon at the QB. They're showing an eye formation and some motion. Breaking loose out of the pile. What an effort right there after. He was completely stymied. What a job that time, Isaiah Nash. Let's take a look at the starting group. Gallon at QB, Frank and Nash. The backs, the receivers. Gory Sinahal, and then the tight end, Carlos Young. And then the down line, we'll keep our eyes on 78, Zaire Collier, just a freshman. Gain of eight, second and two, football at the 35. Turn and give, quick opener, he sprints through there and has a first down by plenty as he makes the 40 yard line. And quick off the ball. Well, the Intercom defense just got pushed for a couple first downs there. There's their down three, Bryant, Tresvant, and Wright. Then they go with the four backer alignment and, and those are good ones. They rampage very nicely and their top tacklers are in that group. There you see that quartet. And then the three deep in the secondary. So Antelope sets up with three wide receivers. They run the football now. Tough D right there, no gain on first down. Well, that big guy, too, huh, I tell you, he takes up a lot of room in there. Keep an eye on him. We're just underway here at Antelope High School, Titan Stadium, the site for tonight's Capital Valley Conference Showdown. Undefeated Intercom in the white uniforms, as you see their defensive unit. On top early, seven nothing. And the Titans trying to sustain this drive. Second and 10 upcoming. Gallon keeps and turns the corner. He's shy of a first, but it's a nice little bite of about seven. We'll see where they spot him. It's going to bring up third and short. We'll see how short. Well, he got, they knocked him out of bounds. He's got about three, Will, to go. Gain of seven, third and three from the Antelope 47 yard line. Spirited crowd here, as you might imagine, for homecoming. And I'd say a modest turnout in support of the visiting Indercom Tigers. Key play here early on. Gorey was in motion, but the handoff to Nash, and he's dropped shy, maybe a yard on the play. It's going to bring up fourth and two. Well, let's see if Coach Ray will gamble here with the ball near at midfield, a huge play, because if they don't make it, why, it's going to put the Tigers in great field position, and they strike quickly. And I know that Coach Ray does not want to give up the football. Uh, his best defense is probably keeping that ball on offense, Will. No doubt. And he can certainly not afford to get to trail by more than a touchdown in this game. So we'll see what they've got up their sleeve. And it might require a timeout. It does. Stay with us, because when we come back from this ultra short break, we'll see what the Titans decide to do. Bye-bye. Hi. 
ya. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. The moment of decision has arrived. The Titans break their huddle. Let's see if they simply try to, well, I won't speculate. Fourth and two, big play upcoming. They're going for it. Gallen rolling, throws. Got an open man and a completion at the 35. And ahead to the 30 for an extra five. Boy, that was a well-conceived play, constructed beautifully on the toss to Gorey. You'll see here how open he was. Look at him wide open. Yes, number 31 with the nice reception in there. Sari Gori, wide open downfield between the corner and the safety. A clutch first down right there. Let's see if the Titans can finish the job. Blast up the middle for short yardage, maybe a couple. He's inside the 30. Nash will get a workout tonight, as will a couple of his running mates. Well, they found that seam in that in that defense, uh, really between the Sparrow, Mitchell, Lemons, and Bolton. That's a pretty good secondary, but they gave uh, they gave quarterback Gallon a lot of time to throw the football. Cedar Hall and O'Roy check in to the lineup for Antelope with Gallon under center this time. And whistles are gonna kill this play. A timeout signaled for just before this snap and two quickies as Matt Ray pulls the plug on that play. Well, Matt's known for that. He doesn't want to waste it down. And I understand where he's coming from. Some people say, God, you, you used two timeouts during this drive already. You only got one left of the half, but he, he knows he's got to respond and get something on the points uh, on the scoreboard, Will. Well, our game officials will have their hands full this evening, led by veteran referee John Wallace. He's working with our umpire, Michael Weaver. Harold Davis, the head linesman this evening. The line judge tonight, Ernest Gordon, and Bruce Greninger serves as our back judge. Whistles signal the teams to come back to action. We'll reset this for you. It's going to bring up a second and eight in the football at the Andercombe 38. I should say the 28. So what do we got here? No. Yeah. Yeah, they picked up the five back here with that encroachment. They surely did. That changes things dramatically. Well, well, going from second and eight to, excuse me, second and three, big difference. From the 33-yard line, turn and give. That play is stymied, stacked, and shoved back. The blocking was disturbed on that and knocked off Kilter. And it closed the hole for Nash, nowhere to go. Well, they plugged it up fast. There was a hole there, but uh, inter Intercom cl people closed it quickly. That front of Intercom, pretty good. Trevzant and Wright and uh, Bryant, etc., are pretty tough inside. Gallon returns from the sideline with the play. Third and three. Quick opener makes the 20, and he's close. He's right there. Well, Nash, once again, he picked up three enough to move the chains. First and 10. Clutch 
third and fourth down pickups have sustained this drive that has now moved to the Endercom 20. Well, a big thing, too, beside moving the chains and getting these first downs, Will, they've knocked off five minutes and change off the clock, keeping the ball away from the potent Tigers. That was certainly part of the game plan for Coach Matt Ray and his brain trust. Here we go. Fresh set of downs from the 20. Gallon wants to pass, looks to screen, incomplete, and a penalty flies. The pass intended that time it was it was a high throw off the hands of yeah. Antunez but it's a hold against the Titans that's surprising there because they they were screen blocking they were screen blocking in there and uh, I thought they opened up the gates pretty quick like and I thought the the screen was really really set up Okay, four substitutions come into the Antelope lineup. The penalty is going to put the football all the way back to the 40-yard line. First and 30 from the 40. Play fake. Gallon flushed. And he's going to try to dance away from pressure and cannot. A huge loss on the sack. Well, he's got a late hit there almost, too. Not quite. All right. Wow. Well, that was terrific pursuit right there. And he just wouldn't let up a pass rush that time from Sean Switzer well, with the sack. As we look at this, Gallon wish he had the down back and throw the ball out of bounds or get rid of the ball rather than keep. You're not going to reverse feel and find anybody with your back uh, to the plays down the field, and that was a tremendous loss. Uh, they're going from first and 40 to second and a roughly 50 yards to go. More precisely, 45. That must come as a great relief to quarterback Gallon that is not 50. Okay. We'll see what they've got. Second down, double wide to the left. Short flip to the flat. Gadget play, but he's going to run it. Big room. Well... He made it inside the 40 before anybody laid a hand on him. They love that play. And, uh, you know, they've been known to throw one or two of those a game. And You'll see Gorey here look to pass, and then he saw the daylight in front of him. That was a great call on the part of Coach Ray. Looking down the field, smartly takes it himself, picks up some of that yardage, Will. Finally. Chased out of bounds by Josiah Tyus, one of the best defenders in the area. It's going to bring up third and extra long. We'll see what they do with this one. Half back pass. Yes, it is. Gorey winds up and throws a flutter ball that's probably going to be picked. It is inside the 15-yard line. And he spins out of two tackles along the near sideline before he's finally dropped. Well, that was a clutch play that time, and... Aaron Espero makes lots of clutch plays for the Tigers. A pick yeah. and a 27-yard return to snuff out that drive. Here's another look. Let's look at it. He throws up uh, uh, just a flutter ball, a duck up high, and it's up for grabs, and Espero's just camping under the ball. And p picks it up wisely, breaks a tackle here. You better put him down. Goes down the sideline, picks up another 20, and puts him in great field position. The Tigers will open shop from their 47. 421. Right side running as Sparrow gets jammed at the line, but lunges forward, gets across the midfield stripe, and makes the Titan 48. Well, Antelope had the football six minutes plus and came away with nothing. It just uh, it's unfortunate because they were going right down the field until they got hit with the penalties and then throwing that pick. And just as we mentioned in the pregame, you can't have penalties combinations along with turnovers will ruin you. That was a turnover. So from the Titan 48, second and five. Breakaway, look out now on the run. Watson tumbled out of bounds near the 25-yard line, and it was 
his tough running to break a tackle just after hitting the line of scrimmage that shook him loose. Well, for their backs, that was a great broke to tackle. Let's look at it again. There you see that inside counter back with Watson, breaks a tackle, veers to the outside, showing his speed, trying to pick up some blockers, and picks it up down the field. And they've got four backs averaging only 10 yards a carry. Right up the middle, a zigzag move. Boy, these backs are shifty, speedy, and you can't give them any daylight whatsoever. Play finally bottled up just outside the 10 yard line. Well, I tell you, between Willie Hardy and we saw his brother five, six years back, I tell you, he has the genes at Hardy family. Espero Hardy, they've got four or five backs, as mentioned, Will, with double digit average per carry. First and 10 from the Antelope 12 yard line. Intercom on top, seven nothing, trying to increase on that. Up middle, contained at the 10 for maybe a two or three yard run. So this vaunted wing T offense of Terry Starks regulated nicely. Well, they come at you and they have a lot of fresh legs. You're facing some speed and deception and you got to really stay at home and be disciplined on defense against this team. And Hardy had that last carry. Second and eight now. Clock winding down here in the first with about two and a half to go. Turn and fake. Here's the Sparrow. Dance home. They run that second touch. Touchdown, Tigers. From the 10. Well, that's two touchdowns for a Sparrow and He's having a phenomenal year. Had five touchdowns coming in here, plus two via the air. Now on for the PAT and got it. Let's take another look at the score after Brandon Berger's PAT makes it 14 and shifty and powerful. We'll be right back. The quick striking Tigers up 14 nothing. Two drives, the second set up by a pass interception. This would be the time when the Titans have to answer. There's the line drive boot, carries to the four. And a run back dropped hard, shy of the 20. My, oh my. Mark Cole Wilson got tagged on that. And Shy of the 20. Yeah, it looked like Tyus coming in there from the outside with a shoestring tackle. So, below average field position for the Titans. They'll open from their 19 yard line, trailing at 14 zip. Let's see what they have in mind, and we'll see if Coach Ray has changed the game plan to some measure. There's the motion, fake it to him, throw it to him, swing it out. Nice gain up the near sideline, first down yardage for Gorey and the Titans. Let's have a look at that, well executed. He went first down, not waiting, watch him loft it right over the head of the defender. Gorey dancing down the sidelines, picks up about 15. 15 yard gain football at the Antelope 34 with 
2-10 left here in the opening period. Turn and give, straight ahead blast is wiped out. Maybe a yard, maybe. Well, it appears to me they're gonna get a few yards inside with the hard running of Nash. But they're, they're gonna have to open up their game and, and uh, not wait to third down. They're 14 down in this ball game and they've got to show something on offense. They had a nice drive in that last series, Will, but then uh, they self-destructed there once they got in that red zone. Well, tough luck on the interception. It was clear that Gorey lost his grip on that pass and it was just up for grabs. But here's second down play going nowhere. That interior defensive line for Indercom is mighty tough. When you look at Wright and Bryant, murder. And Trev's, Trez Vant is not, uh, he's not an easy touch either. The interior three is very tough. There you see Coach Stark along the sidelines. He likes to get another one. He's pleased thus far with a nice 14-0 lead with a minute to go in a quarter. No gain on the play. Make it third and nine. Four wide receivers, two and two. Fires out to the right side. A completion to Gorey, but only to the 40-yard line or so. It's going to bring up a fourth and four. Let's take another look. Navarro on the receiving end. I guess I better adjust my eyeglasses. So they do get a pickup to the 40, but they need to make the 44, but show punt formation here. Single safety stationed by Endercom, Dino Watson. Dangerous threat there in any situation. Very dangerous. And well, penalty marker flies. Coach Ray is conversing with the officials from 20 yards away. Don't know why. Well, they're talking about the clock and, and uh, okay. why the clock doesn't continue to run. That's, you know, delay of game. That's not where you want to delay a game if you're really going to kick because now instead of kicking from the 25 to 30, now you're back almost to the 20-yard line trying to kick. Well, we talked about the MPT factor, and so far two of those areas have hurt the Titans. Very definitely. Uh, I'd be moving up my punt returner. He's kicking against the wind here. I don't expect it to go too far. I really don't. A high floating knuckleball, short though, but it takes a nice Titan bounce, and it's going to be down just outside the Intercom 30. The first quarter has come to an end. 14 nothing Intercom leading Antelope. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer doesn't just change the way you feel, it changes the way you look. From losing your hair, even your eyebrows, to changes in your skin and nails, cancer treatment can rob you of your confidence and self-esteem. But look good, feel better changes all that. More than 800,000 women have learned how to address the appearance side effects of cancer treatment through our workshops. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a free workshop near you. Let Look Good Feel Better help you feel like you again. Well, it's homecoming night here at Antelope High School, but on the scoreboard, the 14-0 Indercom lead has cast a little disappointing cloud over this excellent crowd here on homecoming night. Well, the first quarter time of possession, we'll get back to that in a minute, but meantime, here's a right side sweep. 
They bite off a little chunk, but it was pretty well contained. On the sweep that time, run by Will, Sean, Rushed, and Grisby. Gain of a little, about six on the play. Second and four. Well, six is nothing for them. Like I said, they're used to averaging double digits. And uh, they have capable, they generally have four, five, six backs with fresh legs. Second down. He fakes and throws to the back. That's a completion and a big gain up along that left sideline all the way inside the 35, but a penalty marker thrown in the backfield. Well, he certainly, he reminded me a bit of his brother after he caught that ball. Hardy. We'll see about the penalty. I think this one's gonna come all the way back and then some. It's a hold against the Tigers. Well, despite Antelope controlling the football, their time of possession in the first quarter, nearly 12 minutes compared to just over three for the Tigers. However, Indercom able to put up two touchdowns and again, the turnover contributing to one of those. So the Markoff goes back to the 25 yard line where it's gonna set up a second and 15 for the Tigers. The inside give is handled, but not easily. Boy, oh boy. Well, they moved the pile and picked up about four or five at least. Hardy's a tough runner with speed. It's gonna bring up uh, third and about 12. Let's see what Stark goes to here now. That's a pretty good chunk to move the chains running. Well, the coaching staff anxious to see what happens here on a big third and 12. Well, I'm that, a that was uh, kind of a bizarre call that went nowhere. Well, it sure has faked me out because JJ kept the ball and I don't know what they had in mind, whether that was a, a run pass option. It appeared to be run all the way to me. Whatever was intended, it didn't work. And there's a look at that Indercom sideline and some question marks popping out. Led by Ray. So fourth down from the 30. Fourth and 10. Solo safety dispatched by the Titans. Rather a weak punt that's gonna die right at the 45 yard line. So terrific field position upcoming now for the host Titans. Well, anything kicking from our left to right will is kicking against, and that antelope went through it in the first quarter. You're kicking against a stiff south wind and the punts are not gonna go very far tonight kicking that way. And conversely, when you're kicking with it, you're gonna get another 10, 15 at least on your punts. So a little mini conference at the sideline before that offensive unit takes the field for the Titans from their own 45, 10, 21 to go, early second. A stumble after the handoff and no gain. Well, Nash has been a workhorse thus far tonight. He has uh, had quite a few carries and I look for right now with the wind at their back, if they're gonna throw the football and uh, it doesn't have to be deep downfield, this is a golden opportunity with a, a second and like almost 10. This is a perfect time for Coach Ray to run a play action pass. Okay, you heard it. <clears throat> the Imperator <clears throat> would go play action here. Let's see what or, Gallon and the Titans or, do. Or the halfback pass, the second choice. Wow, timeout. Again, taken. <laughs> Coach Ray is upset because of they didn't get into the formation he wanted. Stay with us. We're going to come right back for more. What? <laughs>
Another timeout spent by Antelope, their final time of this first half. That's number three. And we saw a substitution. Thomas, the running back out. Huddleston, the wide receiver in. Deployed one of four wide receivers to the far side. Motion, they fake it. And fire to a wide open Gorey. But he's blasted out of bounds. Shy of a first as that defense recovered very quickly. Nice deception, though they got the flow going the other way. I like that call. Well, he picked up about six. I thought he had more there, but. Gee whiz, that was not a very good no. spot. Here it's it is. Well, they quickly knocked him back and out of bounds. So they park it at the midfield stripe, call it a gain of five, third and five. Triple wide to the right, and they run it and get drilled. Man, it was almost as if that defensive line knew what was coming. Give him a yard on the play. We'll call it a generous uh, fourth and four. Well, once again, at uh, midfield, they're not going to give up the football. And you got to have something to me, even that little five yarder to one of your running backs, which is a high percentage play. Just uh, get the ball in the hands of Nash or Frank. Either or, it doesn't have to be to a wide receiver. Fourth and four, triple wide to the right. He keeps it, finds a hole, and lunges ahead. Looks like he's got it with wow, that final stretch. Wow, he got a stretch. good mark. He got a good mark. He got an excellent spot. He's, he's, it's very close. If I were Stark, I'd ask for a measurement. He might have it by a nose. If I were Stark, I'd ask for a measurement. Well, let's see if he does. Well, or he moved the football. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he moved from this side of the line to the other side. Oh, my word. What would you call that, Coach? Oh, my automatic spotting is what I call. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. Wow. My, my. And you I, saw the whole thing. First I, and ten. Oh, my. From the Indricum 45, play fake, gallon to throw, left sideline deep, Huddleston out there, can't get to it. He was open, he put a move on the corner, and the ball slightly overthrown. I like the call on first down. Uh, I do like the call. He ran at uh, pass play to Huddleston on the fade, made a nice move on a corner. And I'll tell you what, if he puts the nose up a little higher, he can run to the football. Mitchell was beaten on that play, and fortunate it was overthrown. Second and 10 upcoming on the incompletion. Tight formation this time, back to split. Play fake again, he runs it. Has a nice bite, 5, 10, 15, 20. Is he still going to the goal line? Touchdown, Titans. Gallon took it the whole way, 45. And the Tigers looked like they relaxed on that play, thinking he may have been out. What a play by the junior QB, Quincy Gallon. Well, that was terrific. You know, it, I, I agree with you. It looked like, no, you get them. They were playing, you get them. No, okay, you get them. And I'll tell you, Gallon turned it on the sidelines. Went untouched once he got it to that sideline. Well, we got a new ball game at 14-6. Antelope on for the PAT. And he splits it. Nice accuracy from close range, drilled home by O'Roy. And we'll take another look at the scoring play. You'll see the ball fake here. Turns at great angle there. Nice work, guys. Right down the sideline. There's three defensive players there all waving at him. Wow, we'll be right back. That's what I said, you get him. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people, to love America.
patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. Well, we got an entirely new complexion to this ball game after Quincy Gallon's 45-yard touchdown sprint. It chops the deficit in half, 14-7 now. Inter come on top. Here's the O'Day opening kickoff of that, and it's three yards deep. Touchback out to the 20, and that's where the Tigers will start. Well, here's the prime opportunity for the Titan defense to really come alive here. Well, it is, but uh, I am uh, sure that uh, the Tigers have got the word from the sideline from the coaching staff uh, and the, relative to their last play. And I give all the credit in the world. It was a great option call. He kept the football and went down the sidelines. And uh, quite frankly, well, that replay showed there were three defenders that could have done anything to knock him out of bounds. Left side running, Dino Watson cuts it and makes the 23 or 24. Little mini bite on first down. Watson came into the ball game with 530 yards rushing and six touchdowns and also five pass receptions, two of them good for TDs. Yes, a 12.7 average running isn't uh, too shabby. On top of it, like you said, he's had tremendous 13 total touchdowns coming in. That's, that's great. Ray under pressure, fires low and incomplete. Intended for Hardy out of the backfield in desperation. That'll bring up third and six. Well, that was good uh, pressure by the by the Antelope defense. Came on real tough, particularly that left side. Young and Miller put the heat on. Young had a, a JJ. Uh, Ray had to get rid of that ball faster than he wanted to, Will. And that's what Antelope has got to do. Put them into third and long. D'Angelo Lewis out wide to the left. J.J. wants to throw. Broken up and nearly picked. That was very dangerous in a crowd. Excellent secondary play that time uh, issued by Navarro, but what have we got here? I threw a late flag from center field. A late flag. Wow. And a fallen Tiger laying out at the 40 yard line and here's some uh, spirited extracurricular going on now. The Titans did not like that penalty call. Well, they felt it was a late hit. And I, uh, you know. Well, the intensity of this big game just went up a few notches. Well, I Coming know. off the field there, you saw the uh, Espero number two, but this is uh, gonna have to be settled down here by our game officials. You see the coaches trying to settle their teams down and intercom. Let's take another look and see if we can pick something up here. Okay, 24 just shivered some timbers there, and that's where the flag came in. Well, that was a vicious hit there by Marco Wilson. I, they feel he got that part of the helmet, and that's what that's what caused that commotion there. Okay, continued debate. However, you do see the Tigers huddled up on the far hash right there with Terry Stark in the middle and now being asked to please leave the field. Well, tough luck, but um, Marco Wilson definitely sent a message. Well, he did send a message, but uh, the tempers are right. That right emotion is extremely high right now. There well, is Coach Ray is still asking, you know, what they're going to do. I don't know if they made a decision. Is he just, are they taking that defender out, or what are they doing? I think that's what they're arguing to keep him in the game and not toss him out of the game. 
Well, there's Terry Stark along that Tiger sideline, but the penalty walk off is going to put the football at the Antelope 45. Matt Ray not pleased. And number 24 is not in the lineup right now. Well, Markle may have finished up the night. I don't know if Wilson was asked to leave or just substituted. But still out on the field, there's Terry Stark. But this debate has not concluded yet. Well. And if Matt Ray has his cap off, he's hot. Well, I'm trying to read lips here, and I think Matt may say, okay, the flag, all right, I don't agree, but if the flag, but then why is he out of the game unless it was head-to-head? -head? Oh, he's steaming right now. No, he is upset. I wonder if he's been asked to leave. Well, the football is being marched the other way now. And placed. Well, I thought, I'm, I'm assuming, the question is, did that hit take place in a live ball or after the, you know, a dead ball? That's what I'm confused here, and we didn't get any help from the officials. From the Indercom 45, first and 20, left side run, nice cut to the opposite 45 yard line. And another flag flies. Well, these officials better get a hold of this game now. It's a nine yard run to the 46, but hold the phone. The penalty now being deciphered. John Wallace. Well, how's the lip reading, Coach? It's a behind-the-back block, supposedly, from Intercom. <laughs> well, we'll find out here. Uh, you know, is that a makeup call? What kind of a call is it? I don't know. Well, this is kind of crazy right now, but 7-10 left here. We still haven't reached midway second. Turn, fake, here's Watson, uh-uh. Back to the line of scrimmage and no more. That deception didn't work. Watson, a little slow going back to the huddle. <laughs> he is. Both teams are, both benches are really riled up. Well, we talked about playoff intensity. Here it is. Loud and clear. Ray rolls, rush hard and drilled, but throws for a diving catch at the 45. What a play. Well, a great job by number eight on that catch. Yes, it was. John, and John Lane came through with a clutch catch there on a the low ball. Here you see J.J. rolling under heavy pressure. Lane with a beautiful diving catch, Will. First and 10 from the Titan 45. It's a 14-7 Endercom lead. The undefeated Tigers so far have got their hands full here. Watson on the sweep, wiped out. There was nowhere to go. That was completely diagnosed and swallowed up on nice play there. Van Tunez and at the 545 clock continues to roll here to about a three yard loss. Football at the Titan 48. Nothing doing. Whistles are going to blow this dead. And boy, this is getting really intense now. Well, Hardy taking exception to that. 
Get credit now to that front four. Panola, Gay, and Miller, a young, have rose to the occasion. Watch that interior four. They are now winning the battle up front, at least in the last three or four minutes, Well, You'll see here another loss of one. Nicely done. It's Thomas to finish off that tackle. Ray trying to bide some time. Fires incomplete. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, <laughs> the intensity of this game has just accelerated. Intended receiver was Dino Watson. What I don't see here is they're going to single receivers and max protection. And you'd think that JJ had this ability to run the football more than he's doing. Fourth and 14 upcoming. John Wallace intervening here. Here's the call. Would you like to translate that for me, Coach? We finally have a mechanics given to us of holding, Ooh. which Antelope refused. Okay. <laughs> Fourth and 14 from the Antelope 49 punt formation shown. Solo returner. And the fair oh, catch taken apparently. But he tried to advance the ball. He may have been just off balance there. He was kind of lunging for the catch. And they're going to credit him with a fair catch. So a nice stop by the Antelope defense. As you see, Mark Cole Wilson come off after the fair catch. And it was his hard shot that really ignited some hot tempers. Well, uh, did you say you saw him back on the field, Will? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's good news for Antelope. He was not uh, disqualified from the game. That's good news for Antelope. 435 left here in the first half. This game has been most entertaining despite a rather low score. The defenses have been impressive. So from the 20, Antelope, plenty of time to start a drive. He keeps it, and Gallon works through a hole and spins and makes a nice gain out well, across the 25. If you look at the play again, Will, that's power football because he's got an unbalanced situation. Look, at he's got all kind of people in front of him. Look, blockers galore. Carrying that, that football a little loose. But they gave him uh, max protection, and it was run all the way. And... Uh, Quite frankly, he's impressing me more as a runner than I thought he was. Gain of six, second and four, less than four minutes. Clock rolling here, late second. Turn and give, grabbed immediately, but nice power for first down yardage. That was excellent after contact. Well, I'll tell you, Nash earned his keep on that. Here's another look. Is a give to Nash, running real hard. Lion is surging too. The line, the offensive line is getting off better. That front people, Collier, Abdullah, Moreno, and Panola are getting off the football better here, Will. Gain of five, first down, Titans on the move. Turn and give, big hole left side. He ran to the daylight, didn't he? Well, that's a good run in there. Thomas saw it and went for it. Nice job by Cavante. Thomas, excellent. We haven't seen much of him tonight. The good job. No, he's uh, one of their top rushers. He came into the ball game with 420 yards and four touchdowns. Yes, I'm impressed. Very definitely has three catches for 24. That was a nice run. 
from the 42, gain of 13 on the play. Now we're down to 319 here. Here comes Gowan. Picking his way, nice job. Look at the pile, surging forward. Wow. Yeah. That well, was something. Collier Abdullah Contreras, the center, my goodness. Nash with the pill. Check it out again, this is strong. Watch this, oh wow. Gain of nine, second and one from the Tiger 49. Is that a freshman I'm looking at? It is indeed, number 78 is a freshman. Left tackle, Collier. Okay, two and a half to go, second and one, big hole, and blasting through inside the 45. About another five or six yard play by Nash, and this offensive line is fired up. And coach, you were talking about winning up front. Exactly, and you're seeing it right here. Look at the get off. Look at the push. Hard running. That uh, offensive line of Van Olp has come alive. First and 10 from the 44. He keeps it, breaks a tackle and sprints for daylight. Knocked out of bounds inside the 40 at about the 37. Boy, the second and third efforts by these Titans are most impressive. Well, it is, and, and you know, uh, Intercom has to really tighten up the defense right now. They're not tackling well. Look at this hard nose running. Break a tackle right there. Reach and grab show and Gallon getting up the field, taking advantage of it, moving the chains. And it might even be more. There's Terry Stark not pleased right there. The penalty marker is going to result in a hold against Antelope to nullify an excellent play. And a time out taken here at the 201 mark. And we'll drop out for a short break ourselves. Stay with us. Na, 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 na. I love you so. I love you. I love you. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. We're here. Yay. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Well, it's nice to have you with us this evening here at Antelope High School Titan Stadium, the site for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. Right now, we are locked into an intense football game with uh, heavy value placed on it in terms of the Capital Valley Conference standings. 14-7, Intercom on top, but being challenged outright by the host Titans, who now look at a second and 14 from the Tiger 48, a bad snap, bubbled. And I think the Tigers came up with it. Number 53, Nick Diaz. He out-muscled Gowan, who was closer to the loose football. And I'm not sure it was a bad snap. I think it was just bobbled and lost. I thought the snap was good. Uh, here we go, take a look at it. He didn't look it in, and you'll see him here get out muscled right there. The roll block and the recovery. Nice technique. Well, and break for Antelope. Turnover number two as we revert back to the MPT category. So a break for the Tigers. First and 10 from the Antelope 44. Dino Watson has the carry and falls forward inside the 40-yard line. Looked like some movement along the line there. I thought so, too. Clock rolling, a minute and a half left here in the second period. And again, this is homecoming night here 
at Antelope High. So halftime festivities, not far off. He keeps, fires, he's got a hook up. Shoved out of bounds at about the 33 yard line. So Hardy had the grab out of the backfield. Let's take another look at that. There you see JJ Ray rolling out, spots Hardy. Antunez with the tackle, but we see here the football moved back on the holding call. That has been the favorite penalty of the evening. I would say we've had five holds. Four to five holdings, definitely. Uh, I'd say that seems to be the call. Second and 16 from midfield. Ray fires, got a man. Incomplete. He couldn't quite get to it. The Sparrow down the field. He gets down that field pretty quick. He wanted the flag, but no flag. Marco Wilson had the coverage. Incomplete. Third and 16. They had two people open now downfield. They run deep routes. D'Angelo Lewis was down there as well. And uh, I didn't see anybody underneath. I saw two deep receivers. And that's what I haven't seen, that, that intermediate or or back out of the backfield or in the seam or crossing routes. Okay, let's see. Heavy rush, he fires. Wow. Well, that ball was there. Two bobbles and an incompletion. Wow. That's too bad, that ball was catchable. Uh, Sparrow would like to have that back. He sure would. Well, was, I mean, the ball was there. It was quite a juggling act. They're going to give him a completion on the play. I thought it was incomplete. However, we see there a fallen player just in front, in front of the antelope bench. I believe Huddleston, defensive back, who was in on that tackle. He's on his feet now, number 10. Let's take another look at that. As Barrow, they say, held despite the triple juggle. You make the call. Well, the question is, was his hand underneath when the ball hit the ground? Or was the ball hit the ground? Yeah, I mean, we'll take another look and we'll see how Huddleston was injured on the play. We'll look at number 10 now, not, not the catch, but the defender converging from the right. Here comes Huddleston, and you'll see how he got munched on this play by, by his, his own, own man. man. Tough luck. So credit Espero, despite the bobbles, <laughs> presence of mind to finally locate it and squeeze it. Well, Elias Antonia, onto Antonez did not mean to hurt him. I mean, that was totally accidental, believe me, right? I mean, that's the way it goes, football, and that's how Huddleston got hurt. So we're looking at a, a fourth down play here. Football right at they the 40-yard line. Fourth and seven, looks like. Okay, Ray rolls and fires. Intercepted. Let's see if he was in bounds. Well, they're better off with it not being intercepted, Will, because they'll get the ball here. And that was Huddleston. They're better off that it wasn't an interception because it's worth 20 yards up here. Sure it is. And with just 39 seconds left in the half, uh, the Hail Mary a lot more likely from the better field position. And there you saw coming off the field there, D'Angelo Lewis. But here's a replay. Throwing across his body and Huddleston there trying to stay in bounds with the pick, but a penalty marker lying there. That's a dead, the dead ball foul. Well, there's a late action there with a dead ball foul. Go, 
Oh, he ate the flag. John Wallace. Wow. Well, some of the Tigers have palms raised upward, including J.J. Ray, as if to say, what are you guys calling out here? <laughs> so let's hold on a moment. I guess they're going to give the football to the Titans at their own 40 with 39 seconds left. Matt Ray in the center of that antelope offense. So here we go. Well, I said back in the first quarter, the officials better get a handle on this. There still appears to be confusion. What is it, Jim? Matt Ray is going to let the clock run out and not even run a play. It's going to be halftime without the play. Evidently it is. So the clock ticks down from 10 seconds. And we'll assume that this will conclude the first half unless John Wallace uh, has something else in mind. Never know. Clock shows zeros. We are halfway home. Let's hold it right here because we'll be checking in with our colleague Lauren Goodman momentarily. And I do believe she'll be speaking with one of these head coaches. And I'm quite sure both head coaches will have plenty to say about how that first half transpired. And maybe we can get an update that is uh, one of the first string injured players been down there for five minutes and they're trying to See what the problem is. It looks like something major. Well, so far, this game has definitely lived up to the high intensity playoff atmosphere we predicted. It's been nothing short of that. The hot tempers have been flaring, penalty markers flying in abundance, but still, anybody's game at 14 7. The fallen Titan. Elias Antunez, and we certainly hope that that's nothing serious. Well, color and pageantry abounding, and let's send it down to Lauren Goodman. What you got, Goody? Coach Stark, that was an up and down first quarter, first half. Um, How did you feel about your team's successes, and what do you think you guys did well? We've got to find a way to move the ball now. They're, they're playing uh, a lot better run defense, and they're keeping the ball away from us. We didn't get to run a lot of plays after our first couple drives. And then defensively, they're, they're, they're pounding us like I thought they would. So. Now there's a lot of commotion between the two teams. How do you settle your group and kind of get them refocused on what the goals are in the second half? We, we focused on that all week. We just got to regroup and let them know we can't play with our mouths. We can't say anything. We just got to got to go play football and make it work out. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Will. Thanks, Goody. Yes, nice question there. How do you get your team to refocus after they got out of joint? And that is up to the coaches. Beautiful evening here tonight. Antelope High, Titan Stadium in this Capital Valley Conference showdown, 14-0. Ender come on top for now. We'll be back. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Selfie. <laughs> Nailed it. <gasps> Staring 
contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back. We're at the intermission here at Antelope High School for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. At the halfway break, Intercom by seven on top of host Antelope. Let's rejoin our pal, Lauren Goodman. What you got, Goody? Well, I'm here with the leadership of Antelope. I got the principal on one side at the athletic director here. I'm going to talk to Tino Guzman, the principal here, as the leader. How has it been this week, given that it's been homecoming? Well, the spirit is contagious this week for homecoming. This is my second year as a principal, and this week we've had our powder puff game. We've had our night rally. Tonight we actually have our homecoming dance following the game. So we're super excited here at Antelope to continue our traditions. Now, you talked about a tradition that you guys do where you march, you kind of have a mini parade. Can you talk to me about that before the game today? Yeah, so as the JV game starts, we actually start off in the parking lot, the back parking lot, and we actually march down um, Alberta to Titan Drive with a band and all the school clubs. So it's basically it's to get our momentum going for the game, and it's to show our school spirit. Now you guys have a ton of support out here. Can you just talk to me about the community and how they have supported Antelope, not just athletically, but the school overall? So this is really the hub of our community. If you look out here, we have a new performing arts center that just got built, and we just opened it last month. We had our grand, we had our grand opening and our ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, so the community is super supportive. They're family oriented, and they love to watch their Titans play. Now, tell me something that's very unique to Antelope High School only. What is something that you guys provide that's probably different than other schools in your area? I think in this area, we're one of the most diverse schools, and our kids here find a sense of place. They they love talking to each other, they love interacting with each other, and they're really spirit oriented. Well, you can tell by tonight. Look, everybody's out dressed in the circus. Thank you so much, Mr. Guzman. Now, I'm here with Corey Klontz, the AD here. Now, we know sports is doing well. You guys are really dominating now football, basketball. It's kind of becoming a trend here. Talk to me about some of the missions and goals you guys have here at Antelope. All right, so we've uh, kicked off uh, with the rest of our district with uh, going in this inside-out coaching model uh, and really focusing on educational-based athletics and making sure that everybody has a place here and that we're teaching them more than just the wins and losses, but more be making them more of a, a person and making the whole, the whole complete package there. That makes sense. A lot of athletes need that. Now, fall sports are going on. Give me some updates about what else is happening on campus other than football. Well, so we have uh, all, all the, the the gambit of, of sports going on. Uh, water polo. We have a girls' water polo. That's they're they're getting some good uh, learning experiences going on now. Uh, and our tennis, our girls' tennis is actually expanded by uh, 23 girls from the the normal 12, and then. Uh, Having an on-campus coach really makes a difference for that. Um, and we have our girls volleyball team that has been doing a great job uh, competing in, inside a league. Now you guys, we're getting into winter. I'm, I'm a basketball girl. Um, your basketball teams, both sides, have been just very elite. How have they been developing in this offseason, getting conditioning, going away, and kind of getting ready for the start of basketball season? Yeah, so on our boys' side, we have a new coach. Rob Richards, our previous coach, he, he retired last year, stepped down after 20 years of, of service for for uh, the basketball community. And his longtime assistant, John Dresser, is taken over, Mike Dresser's taken over. And uh, he has a has a kids uh, flying in the gym already, really spirited, ready to go. And uh, we're looking forward to what he can do with them. Now on the other side, the girls' side, uh, it's it's very electrifying. So if you, if you don't know, we have some some really talented girls, Janelle Harrell, and uh, and the crew that she has with her are flying everywhere. Been in the section final the last two years. Uh, heartbreak last year, uh, but we're excited to see what those those five can do for us this year. Can you talk to me? You guys are a very elite program, working together, and a big part of growing as a, as a program is how the athletes work together. How has the support been with other teams doing successful here at Antelope? How has it rolled over to the other sports? Well, this year it's been great. We've had a uh, going through that transformational type of uh, coaching. We've had our basketball teams, everybody already out supporting our our teams, and not just football where we get everybody out here, but to our tennis teams, our water polo teams, even our golf team as they're leaving. Uh, 
so it's really contagious for everybody that's coming around, and uh, the kids have been, been taking to it. So we're hoping to keep it rolling into the winter and having, having them in the gym and, and going that way. Well, it seems like you're doing something right here, Corey. Well, with the two leaders of Antelope, that's all down from the field. Will. Well, thanks, Goody. Yes, lots going on here with the Antelope Titans and all the sports. It sounds like just terrific success all the way around the horn. But for football right now, we're at the intermission. 14-7 Intercom. Stay with us. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer doesn't just change the way you feel, it changes the way you look. From losing your hair, even your eyebrows, to changes in your skin and nails, cancer treatment can rob you of your confidence and self-esteem. But look good, feel better changes all that. More than 800,000 women have learned how to address the appearance side effects of cancer treatment through our workshops. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a free workshop near you. Let Look Good Feel Better help you feel like you again. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Nice to have you with us this evening. We're at Antelope High School for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. There you see the score. It's been tight and defense dominated. But we still got some more halftime festivities and activities here on homecoming night. But let's take a look at the weekly rankings. You know the story. It's Domino's Dozen. Well, here we go in week uh, 7, October. 13th to the 17th. Once again, Folsom still on top. Intercom, you're looking at them tonight, the number two team, 7-0. and oh. Oak Ridge with a great victory, and we did that ball game. And uh, up there at Oak Ridge, Will, and a, a good victory over a tough, tough Del Oro team. Monterey Trail, T.J. Ewing's ball club hanging in there at fourth position. Cap Christian uh, really doing a great job in leading that league. Rockland, tough Rockland. Gave uh, Folsom all they wanted and upset Oak Ridge, still hanging in there. Elk Grove, uh, despite an upset loss going into Jesuit last week, holding down that number seven spot. Center having one of their best teams in years, doing a great job. Del Oro losing a tough game there up in uh, Oak Ridge last week. Granite Bay at the 10 spot. Davis uh, with a big, big, uh, encounter tonight. Je Jesuit is over there as we speak in, in a huge football game and Placer with a big win over last year's champion, state champion Rio Linda. And that's why Rio Linda is 13 this week. Vista Del Lago fighting for that uh, league championship over there. Oakmont having a tremendous year. Brothers uh, still in the hunt in a very, very competitive uh, league over there and uh, once again consumed his oak still in the fight Jesuit with a big game at Davis Roseville in the hunt with this uh, Capital Valley Conference still not uh, out of it and uh, Rio Linda uh, in that in that uh, last spot at number 20 I don't uh, must be an error there that we have to correct and then in the bubble uh, we have Antelope here you're seeing tonight playing a very tough game, uh, particularly in the second quarter with that power running game. Bear River 
Colfax once again with Tony Martello as usual. Pleasant Grove, Rosemont still in that uh, hunt for the title. Whitney, Del Campo uh, going over to El Camino tonight in a very uh, traditional homecoming game. And Luna, Laguna Creek first time on the bubble with us having a tremendous year with only one loss this year in that bubble category. Laguna Creek emerging in the bubble department of Domino's Dozen and so on. Nice rundown, Coach. We're continuing, as you see, some of the floats here on homecoming night. Boy, I can see that a tremendous amount of work and preparation went into some of these. They're very lavish and uh, impressively assembled and displayed here tonight. The band has been rocking and the crowd has been excited throughout. Stay with us, we're gonna come back shortly and continue our coverage here on homecoming night at Antelope High School where Indercom leads it on the scoreboard 14-7. Stay with us. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Back to Antelope High. That's where we are this evening. Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. We're at the intermission on homecoming night. Scoreboard showing a tight one. Indercom 14-7 over Antelope. Let us go down to field level. I know Lauren Goodman has some updates for us. Goody? Yeah, guys, I have some interesting scores that I thought you would want to know. Now, these are either halftime or already into the third. Starting with Oak Ridge and Whitney. Oak Ridge is up 13, Whitney 7. For the Del Oro Grant game, Del Oro's up big, 38, Grant 14. And the Delta League matchup that we were all looking at, I know Jim's want to watch out, Sheldon 7, Pleasant Grove 7. River Valley's up right now, 21 over Bella Vista 0. Another Delta matchup that's tight, tight, tight. We have Jesuit 14, Davis 14 down at Davis. Another tough place to play. Another tight one, Roseville 14, Yuba City 14 coming out of the half. And then we have another game. I know you guys want to get in the score. Franklin 27 over Elk Groves 13. Back to you. Thanks, Goody. Yes, there are some tight games indeed. The Davis Jesuit game locked up with a 14 tie, 7-7 seven, seven in that Pleasant Grove battle with Sheldon. That always tough Delta. They've got some hung dingers going on. Yeah, and a possible upset going with Franklin and Elk Grove. My goodness. Uh, Is that a little surprise to you, Coach? <laughs> yes. And, of course, like we are saying, a lot of playoff games are in session tonight, pre-playoff. Well, let's take a look, a closer look at how the CVC is shaping up besides tonight's contest. And we did get a little bit of a preview there from Lauren, but the remaining games for the CVC contenders, and those would be Indercom, Roseville, and Yuba City. Now, Indercom, they'll have Yuba City at home next week and Roseville on the road to close out. Roseville, meanwhile, will be visiting Bella Vista and then play host to Indercom. And then the Yuba City Honkers 
the real sleeper. Two road games for Yuba City. They visit Indercombe and Wood Creek. So Coach Domino, if you had to place your imaginary chip on one of those who may have the easier road, which would it be? Well, that's a good question, Will, because two of the three are playing Intercom. And Intercom, uh, as Coach Stark knows, has got a rough road ahead. It's not over for them. So I'd say this league is still up for grabs, and you've got Antelope here tonight, Intercom, Roseville, and Yuba City all in the hunt. Uh, right now, no one of those contenders has more than one loss. So really, we have at least four contenders that go down to the wire. And I don't know if there's an easy road except uh, those who have more home games. Uh, th the road teams may have a rougher go. Road teams always seem to have a rougher go, and it's showing out that way this evening. Despite leading 14-7 for Intercom, uh, they got their hands full right up to their necks. Well, coming in here, I'm sure that uh, records show that uh, certainly Intercom come in, comes in here as the favorite, being undefeated. However, we're seeing a very tough Antelope squad playing this game, like I say, like, an, like a playoff game. They're 3-1 in the league. And you know, Intercom is 3-0. and oh. So right now, it's going to be tough to get out of this league unbeaten. And perhaps the champion or co-champions might have one loss apiece. So that's why you see Coach Terry Race, folks, uh, his, his team has really came hard in that second, go off the, that second quarter. They got extremely motivated. Coach Stark was very concerned with his halftime talk. He was concerned, and he was concerned about his team staying focused and doing a lot less of the lip service that resulted in some of that skirmishing out there. Certainly fair warning, uh, and the type of a trademark the championship teams have is the poise and the composure. Well, he, also, I know he also mentioned one key word with that physical. He said the physicality of Antelope showed up in that second quarter. Let's join Lauren Goodman down at field level. Goody? Well, I'm here with the leader for the Antelope Titans. Coach, talk to me about your conversation at halftime with your team. We just told them we, we uh, withstood the surge of the, of the game early on. Um, we know they're explosive and obviously talented group. Um, we were able to kind of withstand that and, and kind of get, get back in the flow and kind of play how we've been playing the last few weeks, uh, being physical up front, um, swarming to the ball on defense. We just got to continue it. We got to continue it. Um, we get the ball first here in the second half and, you know, and just to continue to battle, just to continue to battle and, and continue to stick to our plan. Coach, what's the one thing that your team is going to have to do to make an immediate impact to getting back in this ball game and getting it swinging the way you want it to go? I, I think the big thing right now is we've got to do what we were doing in the really second quarter. We were physical up front. Okay, we're running the ball. Um, we got to continue to tackle, and we, we can't turn the ball over. That was a huge turnover for us there. We kind of had them rattled there a little bit, and we, we kind of gave them a, a breath of fresh air. And um, So we got we got to take care of the ball. we got to control the line of scrimmage. Thanks so much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Will. Thanks, Lauren. Well, he's got a lot to be happy about, though, trailing on the scoreboard. And if he did, in fact, get his Titans refocused and their physicality really showed up big at several sequences throughout the first half. Well, if we, we've got to go back here and realize the first two times that Intercom had the football, they scored in one minute and two seconds. And then when they got the ball back again, they scored in two minutes and four seconds. So in a matter of three minutes, they had 14 on the scoreboard, Will. And since then, they have been held scoreless by the Titans. And moreover, based on your astute calculations, in time of possession, about as one-sided as you can get. Antelope, more than 14 minutes of T.O.P. And Intercom a shade over nine. So they controlled it. They did that part. That way they set out to do that. That was one of their missions. They succeeded there. And this is going to be a very, very interesting second half. One that I imagine will be as intense as the first half. In case you've just joined us, we'll spin the highlight reel for you and show you kind of how things got going. And he had a big part, three different occasions early in the football game. Aaron Espero, two touchdowns and a pass interception to lead the way. And here comes the interception on the fluttering pass from Gorey. 
picked off. One of two turnovers committed by the Titans in the first half, the other a fumble. And once he gets his hands on the ball, Espero knows what to do with it. That was some nice motoring right there after the theft. And here comes TD number two, powering up at the goal line. But after that, as you said, Imperator, nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And then here's Gallion taking the football and going down the sidelines, untouched practically. They did touch him right there and probably should have knocked him out of bounds. We give Gallon credit on a nice long run and put Antelope back in, the, uh, in this football game. And here's turnover number two on the fumbled snap that Coach Ray alluded to as they were driving and had major momentum right there. So Terry Stark buzzing in the ears of his Tigers and hoping that they listen intently. Two of the most highly successful coaches in the area. Stark, 15 years service. Matt Ray in his 11th and collectively they've won 15 league titles. Well, I tell you, they're as good as that. They're, they're uh, two fine, two of the area's best coaches uh, right in front of us. What's your impression here of junior QB Gallon? Well, I think Gallon has come around. I like his running ability. He's showing me he can run that option and get loose and hit the running lanes. He runs very well. He doesn't run like so, some quarterbacks. He's uh, He gets up the field. Now, we saw, we saw Terry's uh, quarterback coming out early. He wasn't happy with his throwing. J.J. Ray came out extra early in the half and started to throw to receivers, and uh, he didn't feel he had a good first half, but he was under heavy rush in that second quarter, Will. Well, after deferring after the opening coin toss, Antelope will have first possession here. It'll be Endercombe kicking to start the third quarter. Brandon Berger to do the booting. A trio of receivers, Gorey, Wilson, and Huddleston deep for the Titans. This one going toward Gorey at the six. Finding a little bit of a blocking wedge there, but it got handled pretty good. Nice downfield coverage. He runs it for a 16-yard return, but nice D on that. It was a nice low tackle. Good coverage by that special teams. And uh, we're going to see this is a big series. They're all big series. And let's see if they can continue to run power football right at the Tigers. Okay, from the 22-yard line, first down. We're underway here in the third. He keeps it, and he's going to be dropped by three heavy pursuit tacklers. Dino Watson among them. Well, Gallon, uh, let's see what they give him there. Not much. If anything, I think barely got back uh, to the line of scrimmage. No, that was wiped out. No gain, second and 10. Nice to have you with us this evening. It's a beautiful night out here in Antelope at Titan Stadium. It's homecoming night here. Lots of energy. Second and 10. He wants to pass. Trying to shake away. Chased and blasted out of bounds. Tough D. Well, no gain. Maybe he lost one. Let's take another look. Here's Gallon feeling footsteps. Almost got grabbed there for a bigger loss. And a hard shot delivered to knock him out. Tyus, it looked like Tyus hit, had given him a pretty good hit there. Ten yards in the previous spot. That'll create a first down. Yes, it looks like the MPT category has another entry. Well, as we see week in, week out, that very often occurs. That thing just kind of comes in into play every week. MPT mistakes, penalties, and turnovers. Well, that was a gift of 10. And I know that has to steam Terry Stark. So from the 32 yard line, new life and out of the hole somewhat for the Titans. Nothing doing, boy, that play was gobbled up. A bear hug on Nash. Well, yeah, we got a defender that's really fired up. It looked like Nick Diaz, but it was hard to tell. That front is tough with Trev's Trez Van 
and right and Bryant. There's the bear hug right there. Well, he's a big bear too, let me tell you. I think you were right the first time on Diaz. So here we go. Loss of one, second and 11. Gorey's got it after going in motion and he slips and falls for a loss of about three. Tough luck. The ball parked at the 28. Third and 14. Well, so far, the Titans have fired two blanks here after getting a gift first down. Well, they certainly do, and they really want a first down here because if not, they're going to be forced to kick into the wind and give up field position. Well, a key play. They stack wide receivers on both sides and show some motion fake to the motion and throw to the motion man it's gory he's got the grab and motors across the 35 it's well short of a first but we got a penalty marker dropped at the 25. yeah it'll be interesting here it's at the line of scrimmage so that means we got a hold on either side we've probably got a hold going against the host Holding offense. We'll go back 10 yards, foul to foul, and replay the third down. John Wallace with the call. And you see Matt Ray looking on and football at the 15 yard line. They've got their work cut out for them. They have to make the 42 yard line for a first. Well, this is a this is a tough play, a tough way. That halfback or flanker pass that he throws can be very dangerous here. And if he calls that play, uh, that flanker pass. Sends Gorey in motion, takes to him. Green is on. Poorly thrown pass and a half-hearted effort by the intended receiver, Elias Antunez. And that will bring up fourth and 35. Well covered. Tough to run because there's X, X amount of plays that you can run when you've got 40 yards to go for a first down, virtually 35, 40 yards. I mean, it reduces your playbook, Will. Dino Watson, the single safety for the Tigers inside the 50 yard line. Well, he's kicking against the wind. That's right where I'd be. Maybe soon, it's gonna be a very shallow kick. And they do not get a favorable roll. It's down at about the 42 or 43. Tremendous field position upcoming for Terry Stark's outfit. Well, surprisingly here, I think that they've got to show some offense. They haven't really showed any offense since the first quarter and early in this contest. Now the question is, is that offensive front going to wake up or are they going to continue to get beat off the ball by that front four of Gay, Miller, and Young, Panola came to life. The run play, Watson bounces it outside and looks like he's got enough for a first down scamper. And there's Wilson right in the middle of it again, surrounded by Indercom Tigers out of bounds. Well, they haven't remembered that. Uh, they've remembered that from early in this game. Watch Watson bounce it out. That's to the outside. There you see in. the Wilson hit right there. Nice tackling in enemy territory. First and 10. Football at the 29. A quick burst through the left side. That was some acceleration right there. Very definitely. And he, Hardy knew what to do there. Well, Coughlin and Diaz opened up a huge hole there. Let's look at that again. The left side. There they go, huge hole. A double team down with Diaz and Coughlin. Huge running lane. Navarro teaming with Antunez for the tackle. And football just outside the 20. 
Hardy bounces out toward the corner, down the sideline to the five, touchdown Tigers, Willie Hardy Jr. Well, he made that look easy. Willie Hardy. That stretches the Tiger lead now. And on for the PAT, Brandon Berger. He's two out of two. Spotted, line drive, got it. At 8.22, early third, here's how the Tigers stretch their lead. Hardy from about 23, breaks a tackle and scoots home. We'll be right back. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Okay, the Indercom Tigers, they wake up their offense and score 42 yards, a short drive and four plays with Hardy finishing it off. And here's the burger chip shot. Fumbled football, loose. Don't know who got it. Three players had a shot at it and the Tigers think they have it. Well, this is a huge, Huge possession right here. Tigers have it. Turnover number three, second fumble. Coming up with the recovery. The Tigers now are in great field position again. Well, once again, both early scores were scored rapidly. And in that last series, the Tigers scored in one minute and 38 seconds. That's all it took them to go down the field. Well, this is a, a stern test now for the Titans defense. They're gonna have to slam the door and stay within 14. Turn and give big time Hardy. Drags a defender and falls inside the 35. Nice bite of about eight. Well, big series here. If that defense is going to wake up, they better do it right now because uh, it looked like uh, Intercom is really motivated right now. Look at them in a hurry. Hardy again, trying to get outside and cannot. He loses That's a yard. Outstanding job there. Huddleston forced the play. And then once again, Wilson kind of finished him off. No, oh, he's terrific. 24 there is a good shot of Wilson. He's been really shivering some timbers tonight with some hard shots in that yeah. secondary. Give Huddleston credit for forcing him inside, fighting off the blocker, setting up for him. I'll tell you, those are two good defensive football players. Huddleston and Wilson. Third and three, and they lost a yard on the play. And that won't get it done. That will not get it done. Well, I don't know. You tell me, Coach, the call on that one. Well, I'm a little surprised now. They still have a fourth and one. Very surprised on that third down call. Ray called his own number, and he was running straight up. And that play was out of sync. Well, I agree with you. Uh, uh, Coach Stark not very happy with the yard to go. You'd think if they come over the football and just line up and run the quarterback sneak there to double team that nose guard and just pick up two. Fourth and one. Power plus. Boy, 
That's a real load right there. I wouldn't want to try to tackle him. Hardy with a first down and plenty. Well, he is. He is a load. And I'll tell you what. Um, once again, let's look at this right side. Get off the football. The, the right side really got off the football, Will. Gain of six. They just wiped out the defense there. He had four without an effort, plus two more. We're at midway third. Sweep to the near side, trying to turn corner. He was very fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. Believe very me. fortunate. I Believe me, that looked like a five-yard loss when now, it started. Dino is a very slick runner. He got himself out of trouble there. <laughs> oh, yeah, this. here it is. Here it is. And watch Antelope doing a job trying to keep him inside. He still gets around the corner. Huddleston thought he had it measured and still couldn't quite get there. Well, they come in here with number nine, uh, getting a play from the side, J.J. Let's see what J.J. goes to. He might go to the right corner and fake him out and pass right away. Gain of three, second and seven. Ray trying to get away from pressure and just dumps it for an incompletion. It looks like he had a man open down the field. Well, he did have a man. That's why I called right corner open. But, you know, he's taking a flat rollout. And he's, you know, going backward on his roll, throwing off balance. And he's had guys open three or four times, and he's unable to reach them. Third and seven on the incompletion. D'Angelo Lewis was the receiver downfield. Well, Antelope could really use a stop. They need two more downs to do it at least. And that's a good start right there. On third and seven, they trap that for short yardage. Hardy unable to shake loose. Well, I don't think Coach is going for Coach Stark. Uh, let's look at this again. Good job by the Antelope defense. Now, I thought maybe that he'd bring in Berger, but I know Coach Stark does not like to kick field goals. Berger is not in. Terry doesn't like to kick, kick field goals. <laughs> Fourth and six. Okay, Ray rolls, gets rushed, fires a bullet to the right sideline for a catch. That's probably his best throw no doubt. of the night. No doubt. He planted square and ripped it. And it, Dino Watson with the grab. Another look. Now let's see. Watch his rollout here. Get up the field. Turn your shoulders. Bam. Wilson KO'd him out of bounds, but not before he made the catch. First down at the 13. Trap play up the middle. Inside the five. Well, that was awfully fast, and Hardy almost took it the distance. Well, it just, uh, I'll tell you, the Tigers came, were real motivated out here in the second half. Well, I imagine uh, Terry had a couple of things to say at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Very definitely. Very definitely. Coach Stark and his staff, let him, let him know. Football looks like it's cradled at the four, three or four yard line near the goal line, but shoved back. Yeah. Well, that was some, <laughs> Tyus got Ty the pill. <laughs> well, he better learn, better learn to, to lower those pads because he ran upright and got nailed. He ran upright. He has, however, carried for seven touchdowns all on deep red zone situations. Yeah, I see that. But they went to their bulldozer and uh, it wasn't there. Well, let's see if he goes back to Hardy or Aspiro. And I haven't seen much of Aspiro's carrying. Uh, I don't even, there. I don't know if I saw him in the backfield. Stymied at the line and shoved back at the goal line. Well, they like him in short yardage, and he has two touchdowns, first two touchdowns. Well, they unpile him. Tyus. <laughs> Let's take another look. 
Here's a give. Looked like Tyus again. It was Tyus again and denied again. But he's running very high, Will. And that's why I wonder if Vespero is injured because I haven't seen him this second half. Well, he may be. Coming up big on that play was Nico Robinson, 53. Well, he's usually missed a touchdown, Espero, when they get inside that five. Second goal from the two. What have we got, Coach? Well, we got movement. 21 is totally confused. Uh, really, Joey Rogers uh, was not sure. And I'm, I'm uh, with Tyus and Rogers in that backfield. What? Here comes Terry. <laughs> Timeout taken. It comes at the 2.59 late third. And after getting inside the red zone, the Tigers have been slowed. We'll be right back. Back to action deep in the red zone. During that timeout, boy, Coach Matt Ray was really giving our referee John Wallace an earful. Here we go. Blasting in there. Touchdown, Tigers. And Tyus, on his third try, goes for six. Well, Hosea, Josea Tyus who ran upright a little early while well, got, got himself one. Brandon Berger trying to tack on his fourth PAT. Chipped and got it. Here's another look at the Tyus touchdown on his third straight carry, this time waltzing in. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Well, the Endercombe Tigers have stretched out their cushion now and lead it 28-7. And you have to say this for Terry Stark's ball club, they have taken advantage of the turnovers. Well, they certainly have, and we've had enough of them tonight. And uh, this game here has uh, gotten to 28-7, and this is crucial for Antelope. Again, the Titans do not handle that short pooch by Berger. No, they, they fumbled the previous one, and that time indecisive and almost coughed it up. Well, they've got to do a better job, uh, and it also, once again, put them in field position. Carlos Young was very hesitant over there in fielding that ball, and uh, they almost turned the ball over again on a kickoff return. They sure did. He's an experienced player, two-way starter, defensive end, tight end. So here we go, first and 10 from the 32-yard line with 2.53 left in the third. Short yardage. Well, that was a loose ball, too. It looked like, the, you know, that was a loose ball in that pileup. Tigers have got it again. Hard to believe. Well, the turnover 
rash has spread. That makes four. My, oh my. Well, he was carrying the ball very loosely going inside. Let's look. Nash, he didn't really have it protected. Well, the Intercom Tigers late here in the third, going for the kill. He wants to throw over the middle, broken up, picked. Here's a big play and an interception returned across midfield to the 40 and nearly to the 35. Now that is a huge break right there and exactly what they needed. An interception and a 41 yard scamper. That was just huge coming from Brandon Cedahall. Here it is, the Ray Bullet overthrown and he leaps for the interception and sees the clear sailing to the right side of the field and chased by three Tigers before he's finally smashed out after a 41 yard return. Here he is, Cedar Hall, great job. Isn't that the first turnover by the Tigers? I believe so. And they tacked 15 on them. They just tacked 15 on them. Unnecessary, unsportsmanlike. So how about that? The Titans are set up. Still 228 left here in the third. They're down three touchdowns, however, but could do something about it right here. So Gorey changes sides, goes from right to left. Well, I'd like to know what the conference is all about because Antelope is going unbalanced to balanced. They've got the defense confused, but the officials won't let them run a play. Gee whiz. Gallon under center, turns, keeps, rolls right and sprints. Drilled hard. There's a big hit. Shy of the 15-yard line. Maybe got a couple on that. They may have saw that coming. Now here's an injured Tiger having trouble getting to his feet. And that is Tyus. Josiah well, let's Tyus. Look at it. Here it is. You'll here's see it. Here's number four right there getting run over. Well, it got his looked like something rolled in. It did roll up. But yeah, it rolled up his ankle there. And he is yet to get up. It's a leg injury for sure. And he's in considerable pain. We sure hate to see that. Now he was pursuing to his left on that gallon rollout sprint. And you'll see here. I saw his ankle roll. Now watch for number four. Right there, and there's where he got rolled. Tough luck, and he's immediately in distress. Oh boy, one of their top players and one of the best defenders in the area. And Very he definitely. Had just scored that touchdown for the Tigers. Yeah. Yeah, he just scored, and he's a great defender. That's the second instance where we've seen a teammate, unintentionally, of course, create the injury. Well, that's tough there. Let's have a hand for Josiah Taze. Boy, oh boy. Well, that will be a significant loss if he's unable to continue, certainly not just for this game, but the entire remainder of the season. But he'll be examined thoroughly and they'll take all necessary precaution with him. Well, this is an opportunity 
I hate to see that injured Tiger, but an opportunity for the Titans to do something here and get, you know, get on the scoreboard again and uh, make this game a little closer. So it brings up a second nine. It was a one yard gain for Gallon on that play, but the he makes the 17 yard line. So we'll see. If they're able to cash in here after the interception return, set this up. Well, we'll see. I'll speculate later. That was the wrong call. <laughs> well, my, my. Well, Nash um, wishes that had not been the call. He's readjusting his left knee pad. And credit Michael People with the tackle, number 28, one of their top defenders. Very definitely. Look, let's take a look at this. Oh, he shot that gap. Right now. Unblocked. Unblocked. That the inside fast. linebacker, Mike People, has 50 tackles and three sacks coming in here tonight, Will. I, there's a little confusion going on in this backfield. Third and 11. Here's the reverse, right side running. Gorey, big speed to the five, knocked out. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a first great down right there. He, now well, that's great turn. That's a beautiful fake inside by Callen and Gorey coming around for, that is a great fake if we see that again. I'll tell you, they converged on that fake inside. And Gorey had the speed to make this be a big game. Here we go, great inside move. Tap people here, look, here he comes. Downfield block there, didn't quite hold it long enough or he would have scored. However, first and goal from the five. Full house backfield to the corner. Touchdown Titans on the burst that time. Cashed in by Love. He doesn't play a lot, but when he does, he gets results. And Drayvon Love has his sixth touchdown of the season. Boy, did they need that. Very definitely, and he kicked it. That play was designed to go off tackle, Will, and he kicked it out to the outside, bounced it nicely to the corner. Well done, had enough speed to go around the perimeter. Excellent. Oh, Roy with the PAT try. No good wide left. Let's take another look at this excellent touchdown run. He had the speed to stretch it, no outside containment. We'll be right back. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Well, this game is tightened up. One full measure, almost a full measure. 28-13 after the touchdown scamper by Love, but the PAT wide. However, the Titans did manage to convert that turnover into points before the third quarter had concluded. There's a couple of speedy twin receivers there that always pose a threat. Well, there you see them. They can go to the house. I don't think they'll go deep with this kick. Number one, they're kicking against a little south wind that's died down a little. I don't think they'll go deep. They might pooch it or squib it. That's a squibbish kick and recovered nicely by the Tigers, sure-handedly at the 35. 
coming up with that recovery. Joey Rogers. And 54 seconds left here in the third as the Tigers set up with the first and 10 from their 35. Well, we haven't seen their premier runner, Aaron Aspero, uh, for a while yet, and I got a feeling that. Uh, well, I, Willie Hardy got that carry. Yeah, I think Coach Stark is, I, I look for him on the bench over there, and I don't know what the story is because um, they might be saving him. Uh, hopefully he's not injured. Hardy carries for five, almost five. We'll call it four plus and a second and six. Football just shy of the 40. So at the 39, a smack right in the middle. About a two to three yard gain. They'll probably spot him at the 42 yard line. Well, that quarter's coming to an end here. We have played three here at Antelope High on homecoming night, but the visiting Intercom Tigers lead it 28-13. Stay with us, because we're coming right back. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. Yeah, and the salary. Oh my god, yes. I right. mean like I was literally I was about to move in with my parents and <laughs> right before the yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know. Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you um what did you Well, we've reached the fourth quarter. Still anybody's game, although Endercom sitting on a rather imposing advantage here on top 28-13. Let's rejoin our pal, Lauren Goodman. Goody? On the injuries, we have two on both sides of the field. For Antelope, they have Elias Antunes, number three. He's going to be done for the ball game, suffering with some movement in his shoulders. And then you just seen the play, number four, Josiah Ties, has some left knee injury, probably would not return for, to the ball game. Will. Thanks, Goody. On first down, Ray rolls away from the pressure. He's going to run it. Crosses midfield, makes the 45 and a little bit more. However, <laughs> I see a penalty marker down in the backfield. What's been the favorite call tonight? <laughs> Holding, I believe it's number seven. And yes, we have a holding. Well, that is going to make things a little more difficult for the Tigers. They had been looking at a th third and three that Ray cashed in, but now they'll find themselves in a little different situation here. Well, I'm still looking for Aaron Aspero. Maybe he's back in there. No, I see Hardy back there. And that is a good question because I can't find him along the sideline. Well, 15 yard penalty makes it third and 18 from the 27. Ray rushed hard, gets away from that tackler and throws deep down the sideline. Got a man, incomplete. He made a sliding try, but couldn't hold it. Huddleston was all over Hardy. Yep. All over Hardy. Fourth and 18 from the 27. Well, it's punt time for Terry. Nice coverage by Jerry Huddleston. As you see, guy rolling out, heavy pressure, going deep down the field. Underthrown, and. Yeah, if he throws it deeper, it's a TD. So they show punt formation. Oh. 
Hardy standing at the 15 yard line. A low liner and it's going to die at the 39 yard line. So a good stop, good field position and with nearly 11 and a half left in the fourth here, the Titans have life. They do, they gotta go, they've got to put together a couple of drives here and pretty quick. Uh, that punt against the win by Hardy was the way to go. The low line drive type and let it, you know, take that bounce and uh, not worry about the wind knocking it back. But like you said, Will, this is uh, a time. We've got a whole quarter here, a lot of time. Well, a nervous Terry Stark pacing that Tiger sideline. When you see those arms folded in front of him, you know. Yes. First down from the 39. They run left and get nothing, maybe a yard. Yeah, well, Nash had it with a couple of tough yards. Uh, they grudgingly give him one, second and nine upcoming. Clock rolling at the 11.05. Time to go upstairs, huh, Coach? Certainly is, and, and really, uh, don't wait to third down and limit your quarterback to make a play or punt. Uh, I like giving him at least two downs if he's going to throw. Well, triple wide receivers to the right. He keeps, stays left, can't well, find the daylight. You know, he ran a great fake inside and no one touched the dive back on that option. The dive back, that fake picked up about seven untouched. Wow. A three yard gain, make it third and five. Brian Frank made a great fake. We haven't seen him carry the ball much tonight, if it ever. One carry, I think. Hey, that's amazing. So Gallon returns to the huddle. We'll see what Coach Ray has in mind on third and five. Wide to the right. Far right is Gorey. Whistles are going to yeah, bust this play. He's going to call a time. He didn't like it. So Coach Ray will call a timeout right now when he doesn't like something. 9.56. There you see. The man in charge, John Wallace. And yep. we'll come back in just a moment for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. OK. They're back on the field, third and five from the 44. Gallon to throw, has a catch across midfield. First down yardage on that hookup that time, finding Gorey. Oh, he's been a very productive player tonight, and we'll take oh, yeah, another look. Very, very definitely. Well, Gallon laid it right in there. Soft spot underneath, first and 10. That looked like Wiggins. Run play, big daylight, and a burst to the Indercom 40. Oh, Nash loved that daylight. Take another look here. Nash finally dropped. Nice tackle there, but one of the better opening daylight plays he's had there off that interior line. 
Gallon under center this time. Turn and fake, he keeps to the near side. He's got some daylight and scampers out of bounds at about the 32 yard line. First down. So they're moving. Well, this is a big series for Antelope. This is big time series. Nice job by quarterback Gallon. Oh yeah, that Endercom D line got fooled on that play. Very definitely. He's turning the corner and they're going for the inside fake now. I'm sure that the defensive coordinator, uh, Bert Salinas, is telling them to stay at home and stop sucking inside for that fake to the dive back. First and 10 from the 31 yard line. Titans on the move. Play fake, big rush. He steps up and he's going to run it and he's got plenty of room to the 15 yard line. Nice move by Gallon and a great decision. I like it. Stepped up in the pocket, flicked his wrist, didn't like the coverage down there. And I, I, excellent. But he's coming of age in this game. Watch this movement. He sees the running lane open, scampers up a good 15 yard, maybe 20 yard gain. Nice. Give him 18 on the carry. First and 10, football parked at the Tiger. 13 yard line. Eight and a half to go. Left side, boom. Nowhere to go. Nash got eaten alive on that play. Well, once again, I'll tell you, uh, Trev Zantz had a big time game. You know, Joshua Trez Vent has had a big game for the Tigers. He loses about a half a yard there. Well, I look for him to run that uh, inside fake play action and roll to the corner. I really do, and uh, he's got to, like I say, it's 7.55 with the, on the clock here, and perhaps he'll go to Gorey in that corner. He's got him wide out to the right. They run it though, Nash trying to power up, but shoved back as he reached about the 12 or 13 yard line. Now, a little surprised at that call. They gave him two, make it third and nine. Let's take another look at that. He was taking on three guys right there. Yeah. And. <laughs> yep. That's a tough play to run in there. Uh, really against that front. Tresvant and Wright and Bryant Diaz are tough to run against. Key third and nine. Gory again out to the right. Allen throws to the end zone incomplete. A little mix up on that. Yeah. Coverage out there applied by. Lemons was right there. Now, what's the deal here, John Wallace? Well, there was a late flag thrown, Will. I think so. I think they're going to th they're going to hit uh, put an interference on uh, uh, Intercom. I do too. And there's the walk off, and they're placing the football at the seven. Another penalty. Automatic first down. Correct. That's right. Should be. Uh, they haven't adjusted the down. No, they're calling it third and three. Oh, brother. Okay. Why wouldn't that down be over? Nash, push it forward. Touchdown, Titans. What a push. Big time push. That line paved the way, and he was right behind it. Nash hits pay dirt from three yards out, and the game tightens up even more. Well, we've seen him get pushed twice in the end zone, once earlier on the first TD. Late substitution coming in. 
Here we're missing a man. Spotted clean, boots on the way, got it. Another look as the Titans come roaring back here. Nash what? doing the honors for the touchdown as he spins home. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Well, the host. Antelope Titans on homecoming night have come roaring back after trailing 28 to seven against undefeated Indercom. Now have closed that gap to eight. Well, he's got the wind and let's see if he can, if he's got a decent kicker here, he can with the wind, he could put one in the end zone. He really can if he can hit one right. It's a squib like an onside. It was up in the air. They could have challenged that a bit more and gone for the ball. However, well, Indercom able to come up with it. Well, he had the hands team in there and he did a good job. Uh, really good job by 24 in there. Quincy Lambert jumped high. Coach Stark had his hands team in there and now it's uh, with this ball game not over 6:45 remaining, and uh, we got ourselves a tight ball game here, 28 to 20. Let's see if Terry Stark Ball Club can uh, come through with a drive of their own with an insurance touchdown because they're not out of the woods yet. From the 44-yard line, Watson in motion. He's got the pill and trying to get outside and cannot. Nothing doing about a two or three yard loss. I'm surprised that they're trying to run wide against a very, very quick defense. Well, they gave him a pretty good spot. He loses a couple. Call it second and a dozen from the 42. Clock ticking away at the 6.05. Now this Titan defense has really come up big. Ray keeps it, comes to the near side where he's got running room. Reaches midfield and finally spun out near the Antelope 45. That's a big first down. It surely is. Let's take another look here. He's able to get outside with his speed. Had nothing but daylight out there. Holding that ball, as they say, like a loaf of bread. Huddleston finally with the shove out. So from the Antelope 40, that got them off the hook. That was a big first down. Whistles are going to prevent this play. Time out, Endercom. It comes at the 550. We're going to come right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week.
Well, in case you've just stopped in, this game has really tightened up here in the fourth quarter after Indercombe had cashed in the turnover to go up 28-7. The host Titans have really come on strong. Now they need another stop. Big running room right there and a dance Hardy. by Willie Hardy inside the 30. Well, he's shown some moves and he can run with power and he's got moves and he's a great two-way player. Let's look at this again. Watch Willie hit the line of scrimmage, toss it to the outside, evasive, picks up a nice tackle there in the secondary, but I'll tell you, he's been tough tonight, inside or outside, plus he does a great job as that outside backer for the Tigers. That was a nice tackle by Huddleston, solo tackle. First and 10 from the 29. Turn and give. Well, that's big running room there for a nice time consuming good gain on first down by Willie Hardy. Well, he's uh, not only moving the chains, it's, they're moving the clock. Good, good tough line blocking inside. Look at the legs move, look at the leg drive. Football at the Antelope 21 after that eight yard gain. Second and two upcoming. Longer count this time. Turn and give. Nowhere to go. No, no, nowhere, no way, no how. Hardy had no chance on that. He well, was wrapped up immediately. He bounced it outside. I thought I had saw some movement by the right tackle, but apparently wasn't called. So timeout taken by Antelope. Let's look at this replay and see this defensive stand here. Right there, lateral pursuit. Huddleston has played terrific in the secondary with run support. Very definitely. It's going to bring up. Well, they're going to need to make the 20 yard line for a first down, so. We got 4.09 remaining. And it has been a very festive occasion here on homecoming well, night at Antelope High. Well, I, I think Huddleston and, and Wilson have done a tremendous job on that defense. Uh, so I'll tell you. Well, we always have something good for you coming up, and next week is no exception. We're going to do the Delta Diversion and take it all the way over to Elk Grove High, where the Thundering Herd are going to play host to the Kasumnas Oaks Wolf Pack in a Delta League matchup that will definitely reveal two more pieces of the puzzle in that stretch run for the league title. Here's a big play. Boy, they have gone exclusively to their big back, Hardy. And again, the mystery, the absence of Vispero remains a mystery. It is a mystery. Football parked <laughs> at the 20. What is it, fourth and two inches? All right. Well, they're showing second and one here, but that's really fourth and about a half a foot. Mm -hmm. it looks to me like fourth and a foot. So we'll see. Now, do they try to draw? It's timeout taken by Indercom. Coach Stark came on the field and called a timeout right now, and he's upset. Well, he had two left. He's down to one. Both clubs with one timeout he, remaining. He's just not very happy. Uh, he's giving a uh, a lesson to someone in that huddle. Believe me, to hearing it. Well, again, Matt Ray out onto the field, giving referee <clears throat> John Wallace an earful. Well, 
We haven't seen a sparrow and we know Tyus was injured, but we don't know what the update is on a sparrow. Well, as you know, we always select players of the game and we'll do so again this evening and hold you in a bit of suspense. Uh, the Imperator is shuffling with one of the ballots here and Lauren Goodman will do the honors. Meantime, fourth and one, and there's a leaping first down effort by Willie Hardy. Well, we have been informed by our field source, Lauren Goodman, that the whereabouts of Aaron Espero is unknown. Well, Aaron Espero scoring the first two touchdowns tonight of the night. Turn and give. That's why Hardy has had a full night's work in one half. Well, he sure has. He's got uh, probably uh, I'd say if not 20, clo very close to 20 carries unofficially. And he's carried the load as you mentioned, Will. There you see him. Run it up the gut, short yardage, as the clock continues to work against the Titans, and timeout called. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Stay with us. short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Two oh four left in this one. And it appears, unless something wild occurs, that Indercom will hang on they're looking here at a, well, they need four yards or so. They need to get to the 10, inside the 10 for another first down, but they're in control if they can hold on to the football up 28-20. Ray keeps, rolls, fires, wide open, touchdown Tigers on the flip to an undefended receiver who slipped away and found the soft spot. John Lane. John Lane, the tight end. You haven't heard much about him, and boy, he was wide open. That's his fourth touchdown reception of the season, and probably most of them or all of them are like that one. Well, coming in with six catches into this ball game, like you said, Will, three TDs coming in, and number four tonight. So, Mr. Berger on for the place kicking chores. Trying to tack on one more extra. So a minute 59 left in this one. John Wallace, as you see there, picking up a penalty marker and sticking it back in his pocket. And we've had a number of delays and conferences to sort out plays that evidently were unclear. And now a penalty. What's this, a five yarder against Indercombe on the PAT try? Looks like it. 
Sure is. So let's see if it's a disturbance for Brandon Berger. He toes it. Got it. At 1.59, late fourth, Indercombe stretches out again. Nice fake inside by Gallen. He rolls out, and he's got Lane wide open in the corner. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. Indercombe Tigers feeling a little more comfortable right now after tacking on that touchdown. The pass to a wide open John Lane, leading it now 35-20. And certainly the Titans could use a great kickoff return here. This one's towed the distance, taking it about the nine yard line. Big room up the middle, nice slice of daylight there. Huddleston found the daylight. And motors out to give. He was the one tackle some. away. Well, actually, that saved him. He turned up that running lane with a lot of uh, acceleration. From the 28 yard line, a first and 10. Gowan's going to have to go to work and bite off bigger chunks. And they're going to have to no huddle and get on the ball very quickly after each play. Leandre Huerta Moore into the ball game as a wide receiver. Haven't seen much of him tonight. Incomplete on that throw. Huerta Moore had come into the contest as one of their top receivers and a veteran of last year. He had nine receptions for 254 yards. That's a pretty good average. Yes. A couple of touchdowns. 28.2 per catch. Look at that setting. How about that? Looks like the twilight Look, zone. Yeah. Is that a Halloween setting coming up? But like you said, Will, 28.2 per catch coming in here. Haven't seen him tonight. Triple wides to the near side. Second and 10. A loose football, he dives forward and tries to recover. Apparently does. Boy, that was a nice salvage there by Gallon. You get all the false starts? Well, second and 13 upcoming. Gallon right there, as you see, getting a word from head coach Matt Ray. All right. Well, the junior has had his moments tonight. Oh, yeah. I like that he's grown with up. What you're saying, he has come of age. Qu Quincy Gallon, very impressive performance tonight. Looks like the same formation. Let's see what happens here on third down. He's rushed, gets away, and he's going to run it to the near side and gets himself out of no, another 15 yards. There's two flags coming. One from center field. That play was reminiscent of his touchdown run in the first half where it looked like a couple of those Tiger defenders kind of gave up on the play. Or relaxed. We'll see about the penalty flag though. Terry Stark looking on. Yeah. Pacing, waiting, wondering. Possibly worrying, but not much. He knew he would have his hands full on this road trip tonight. Well, exactly. Well, here's our, all our officials conferring, Jim. Well, we got a summit conference going on. A summit conference, and John Wallace will give us the word.
Offsetting. Okay. Well, they have the football parked at the 45 yard line as Matt Ray yeah. moves down the side talking to Gallon. First and 10. I don't think they'll come back with that flanker or halfback pass. I know they used it earlier tonight, but he's good for one or two of those a game. Well. Huddleston can throw, I know that. Huddleston's out wide to the right, slotted inside where to Moore. Big rush! He gets it off and it might be trapped. It's probably an incompletion. Boy, well, they were on him. <laughs> the lineman, he's, has, he's got to catch that ball behind the line of scrimmage because the linemen, three linemen were 20 yards down the field. Okay. Willie Hardy was in there fast. Well, like I said, if the, if the catch is made behind the LOS, those linemen could go downfield. But it, to me, it was over the line of scrimmage. So if it was completed, it would have been called back. Forty four on the clock. And the Titans are going to squeeze out every one of them. Here's motion in the backfield. They throw to that swing man. Up the side. He's got to get out of bounds. OK. All right. Good job getting the ball off to Navarro and wisely gets out of bounds. They sent him in motion and he turns a corner gets the ball back to Navarro tight ropes the sideline get out of bounds that's the time you don't want to take on anymore you want to get out of bounds as quickly to stop the clock first and 10 football parked at the Indercom 42 35 20 Antelope trying to get down to the field for another score and then they got to do this without huddling. Corey is in motion. Gallon rolls toward him now throws deep to the opposite side. He's got a man out there, but it's off target and incomplete. Huddleston had broken free and was ranging with a few steps on the secondary there and just couldn't catch up to that pass. No, he, he was open. <laughs> Substitution. You gotta get that uh, the plays and maybe give them two plays in a row, Will, where if they had to and the ball was live, where they can get to the line of scrimmage quickly and giving him two plays. Second and 10 from the Indercom 42. They fake it to Gorey. Gallon throws deep again. Got a man there, a drop. Oh, oh my goodness. And that would have been out of bounds to stop the clock. Carlos Young wishes well. he had another try at that one. Well. Let's take a look. Gallon put that one right where it belonged. Well, I'm impressed with the way Gallon is throwing. Watch this. That was a great throw right there. Tremendous throw. Over the head of the defender, outside away from the safety helping. As good as it gets. Third down, 10. Four wideouts, two and two. Right back to him. That's worked all night. But see, there's where you got to get out of bounds. That's right. Clock rolling. And that might just finish it up. Navarro needed to get out. Instinctively trying for extra yardage. And the examination is over. The clock runs out on a game. Antelope Titan Ball Club, and you can see they wish there was more time on the clock. But this one winds up.
with an Intercom victory. By the count of 35 to 20. Sportsmanship shown on the handshake line against some very intense rivals. And certainly the victors know they were in a ball game tonight. And this young Antelope Titan outfit just grew several inches, but came up short tonight on homecoming. When we come back to our post-game segment, we'll have some insightful comments from the Imperator and be able to announce our players of the game. Lauren Goodman will do the honors with those interviews. So stay with us. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer doesn't just change the way you feel, it changes the way you look. From losing your hair, even your eyebrows, to changes in your skin and nails, cancer treatment can rob you of your confidence and self-esteem. But look good, feel better changes all that. More than 800,000 women have learned how to address the appearance side effects of cancer treatment through our workshops. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a free workshop near you. Let Look Good Feel Better help you feel like you again. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. The verdict is in, and the decision is final this evening in Antelope, where tonight on homecoming night here at Titan Stadium, we saw a most intense ball game. Undefeated Intercom survived a bit of a scare, and they prevailed 35-20, but certainly major kudos for Matt Ray's outfit and his young ball club emerging now. Yes, but pretty much a junior dominated football team. Uh, they came back tough. They gave up two early scores, despite the fact that there wasn't, you know, they, they dominated the clock in the first half, but still were down. But they showed a lot in the second quarter, coming back with a touchdown. And of course, the second half, as mentioned, uh, they gave them all they wanted with their run game. And Gallen grew up a lot with his passing game. He did indeed. The fact that they gave up four turnovers in tonight's ball game and still closed within 28-20 with plenty of kick left in the fourth down shows a lot for this team's character and their, their talent level and their ability and the guidance provided by Matt Ray. They've definitely bought into it and despite such a young ball club, they're going up fast, as you said, Imperator. Well, they certainly are against a very speedy, a uh, wing T ball club with a lot of deception, a host of running backs, and they needed the host of running backs because you see a couple of them, as you take a look at our picture, they're gimping off there in a hard hitting contest. Uh, tempers flared a little bit in that second quarter, and uh, there were a few late hits there and there, but I'll give the coaches, the veteran coaches credit, along with the officials, the calming things down. 
and so we had a, a normal second half with a lot of hard hitting, but uh, tempers were under control. No, I think this Antelope Club coach is going around there congratulating them and said they, they came of age tonight against an undefeated ball club. Well, they certainly did. They they showed a marked improvement, and they played the best team in their in their league right now, if you want to call 8 no the best. Yeah, Endercombe is accustomed to having that type of record this time of year. So let us move on slightly and let you know that we'll post a graphic for you indicating our players of the game that were selected based on their excellent performances this evening and for visiting Intercombe, Willie Hardy Jr. took over in the running back department after an apparent absence by Aaron Despero. <laughs> yes. He had two touchdowns so fast but we didn't see him shortly thereafter so Hardy an outstanding job as a linebacker making tough hits and then running the football throughout the second half. And for the Antelope Titans, a pair of honored players, quarterback, junior QB, Quincy Gallon, and the two-way standout, Jerry Huddleston, for the Antelope Titans. Our Lauren Goodman is standing by with our players of the game. Hey guys, well I'm here with the first group, Antelope, and now I'm here with Jerry. You had major improvements from last year. What have you worked on to get better to give this team more? Well, last year I focused more on playing safety, but this year is my first ever corner varsity start. So I worked more on my man coverages and uh, zone reads and improved on that over the last offseason. Now you guys played a pretty good team at Intercom. This is kind of your league ranking of like where you guys want to be. How was it out there actually playing against them tonight and kind of giving them all you guys got? Well, we came into the game. We knew they were an undefeated team. I feel like we played really hard. I think we did really good out there. Um, next time we next time we're playing them, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be better. It's gonna work more in our favor. Now the season isn't over. How do you feel about your team and their energy and how they're gonna respond tonight? Can you read the question, please? How are you guys are going to respond to after this game? How are you guys going to respond the rest of the season? Guys, has got some good games in there, still in the race, and you guys are definitely going to make the playoffs. Um, we have a bye next week, so we're going to focus more on River Valley this upcoming week after the bye. Uh, I feel like we're going to do really good against them. No questions asked. Well, you had a good game out there, Jerry. Thank you for being our player of the game. Now I'm here with the QB, the, the guy that kind of made things happen out there for Antelope. Can you just talk to me about your leadership and how much you've grown from last season and kind of just getting comfortable in that position this year? Uh, definitely last year I was playing behind Nathan Lucero, and he's an amazing uh, he's an amazing quarterback. I mean, he's in college playing baseball right now, but just his leadership skills definitely taught me a lot. And uh, just being part of the team, I definitely think my leadership has a lot to do with my team. Like they kind of just listen, and if, if they're told to do something, they know exactly what to do. Now, we know it's a very unique position in playing quarterback, um, but you have the ability to not only throw and see receivers out there, but you also have the ability to take it, kind of run and create some things with your legs. What are you seeing on the field that gives you that confidence to kind of get a big burst? You kind of had some 30-yard runs, some 40-yard runs. What are you seeing on the field out there? Uh, I think just feeling it as the game goes on, like like it's easier definitely with like the jersey colors. You see like a, a mixture of colors in one area. You just kind of take off, and you see the open, you see the green, and I just got to hit it and go. Now, we know one game doesn't stop a season, and how are you guys going to take this loss and kind of benefit and turn it into an advantage to help you guys kind of go far in the playoffs because everybody's hoping that you guys can kind of push through? Uh, uh, our, our preseason definitely played a role in that, like playing teams like Folsom and Freedom out of the Bay Area. It's uh, just playing all those uh, playoff contending teams that early on kind of prepares us for games like this. And uh, later on in playoffs, I think uh, we're going to take it to River Valley. Sounding good, Quincy. Thank you for being our player of the game. Good luck on the rest of the season. Now, I'm here with the guy who stepped in. Just talk to me about <laughs> what happened there. You got an injury, and your number was called. What were you thinking, and what were you kind of going through throughout the game? Just pick up where he fell off, where we fell off at. We just we just kept grinding. Uh, I got to give it up to our um, offensive line. They they pushed me there, so they, they really won the game, really. I was going to ask you about that. Can you talk to me about the offensive line a little bit more and what they were kind of helping you give you to get those big runs and kind of push through some plays where they kind of pushed you and had your back? Yeah, they in the huddle, they was like, Will, we got you. Let's go. We're going to get there. And I trusted them. Now, I got to see you on the sideline. You were really animated with your team at halftime, talking to them about just staying focused, kind of bringing that intensity. What is that intensity? Where does it come from? And what does it take to kind of go through four quarters and play it like that? 
Leadership. You got to be a leader. If you want to pull out with big games like this, really. That's it. Now, we know um, you guys had a few injuries in the running back areas, but you guys are seem like a core. All of you guys are producing good numbers. Can you talk to me about how you guys have been working together to get better and how, how much is the brotherhood with your, your running back core? In practice, we, we tell all the juniors, all the lower classmen, we got to step up for stuff like reasons like this, you know. So when we got injuries like this, they can step in. Now, you guys are, are undefeated right now. Mm -hmm. Going, getting focused really to finish out the season and get ready for the playoffs. How do you feel your team is getting to those levels to be playoff ready? I feel like it's just it's practice. That's what it is. We just need lots and lots of practice. This this wasn't even our best game of football right here. This wasn't even our best game right here. So I know we're gonna make it far in the playoffs. Well, you had a great game tonight, and I'm glad you guys have more in the tank. Thank, Thank you for you. being our player of the game. Now I'm I'm here with the. The legend himself. We kind of got you fired up, Coach. I saw you on the sideline, and you were having some conversation um, with the team and kind of getting them focused. What was that intensity, and, and how are you trying to talk to your team to kind of just settle them down into playing a complete ball game? Well, yeah, we're, we were in a really hard game, and we had a lot of calls go against us in this game. And we have to learn uh, to, to fight through that adversity and keep on going because uh, it's just like the playoffs. We told our guys last week, playoffs started last week. The next four teams we play are all going to be playoff teams. Coach, you guys had a few injuries. Can you kind of talk to me about those injuries and did they play an impact or? Oh, yeah. A Sparrow went out and uh, he's going to be okay, but we decided to take him out the second half. He's, he's one of our best backs and uh, Josiah Tyson, our best linebacker, went out. And he probably could have went back in, but again, you know, he twisted their knee, so we thought we should keep him out. But the guys that came in and, and played for him did a great job. Coach, now we know you you hold your program to this high esteem level. You guys want to push through and make it to the playoffs. What's going to be the difference this year to help the intercom Tigers kind of ride through the playoffs and not get short cut? Well, it's it's going to be our intensity and how tough we are because. At some point, you're going to go against teams like this. They're going to play smash mouth football, come right at you. You got to stop it, and you got to answer with your own. So, as the playoffs uh, move on, the teams are stronger and tougher, and so you got to match that toughness. Well, it seems like you guys are focused and ready to go, Coach. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your time. Okay, thank you. Will. Thank you very much, Goody Terry Stark, in his 15th year, and. If my arithmetic serves, this evening he notched his, what, 159th win? At this school, yeah. He's got, when you combine all his head coaching experience, he's right in that 200-plus. Uh, alone at Intercom, I believe you're right, with 150. But Terry uh, made a very strong point with his team tonight. He was concerned all week long in the last couple of weeks, even though unbeaten, how physical they would be. And this team is not quite there yet, and I understand why he says that. But in a game like this tonight, they did some growing up and realized that, uh, hey, uh, every game's a playoff game, and we got to be more physical. We know we have speed. We know we have deception. But we got to get it tougher up front and tougher in every position. Now, as we look ahead, and you heard Terry just say that the playoffs started two weeks ago, and he's measuring the success of the teams in his conference as potential, if not for sure, playoff teams. It's not an easy road in any of these conferences, as we'll see, uh, and as we have seen when we visited Delta, Sierra Foothill, CBC now, and back to Delta. It is playoff intensity from here on out, and with that in mind, we've seen some of the best football uh, for the entire season because of the intensity that has built up here with the eyes on the prize and a playoff berth after 10 weeks. It is. And Terry's ball club, uh, uh, again, we had uh, an, you know, an analysis of the remaining games of all these teams. And Terry's got to go against the Yuba City team and the Roseville team. And I'll tell you, they're going to have to play their best. And they will have to play the best if they're going to remain undefeated and get that number one seed. He not only wants to win the league, but that's number one right now. Win them one at a time and then get a high seed in the playoffs. Well, his ball club improves to 8-0. No. The Antelope Titans slip a notch. Don't know yet what Joe Catolico's Roseville outfit came up with tonight, but 
I would say going into week nine that Roseville would be the the main nemesis in line for Endercom. So we do want to remind you that we have something pretty good coming up for you next week. We go back to the Delta. Two teams seeking the gold. And Kasumnas Oaks surprising a lot of people, especially with that wake-up call, victory over Monterey Trail early in the season. They'll go up against John Heffernan's thundering herd of Elk Grove. That will be a brawl. Well, it certainly will be. We're looking forward to that one out in Elk Grove. We haven't been there in a while. And uh, once again, another playoff game, pre-playoff game w that we're going to go to. Well, Cover. Elk Grove High, one of our director Gary Martin's favorite venues to visit, will be there in one week's time and should see a whale of a ball game. But here tonight on homecoming night at Antelope High School, the host Titans fall to the undefeated Intercom Tigers by a final count of 35 to 20. And a tough, intense ball game it was. Many injuries, most of them shaken off, and a slug of penalties indicating how hard hitting this game was tonight. 35 20 Intercom over host Antelope. The young Titans showing very well tonight against the league leader. So that's the way it wraps up tonight from Titan Stadium here at Antelope High School on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. We thank the administration here at Antelope High where we've visited so many times. So for game director Gary Martin, my colleagues Jim Domino and Lauren Goodman and the entire hometown sports Game of the Week broadcast crew, I'm Will James. We thank you for joining us and look forward to the next occasion when we can share your time. So long, everyone. This program from Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week is available for purchase on DVD. For more information, call Access Sacramento, 916-456-8600, extension 0. This has been a Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast from Access Sacramento. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda.